All right, so I'm Randy Rock, and this is Kenny Johnston, and we are cinematographers um, for Golden City Films. And today we're going to talk about and review and compare uh, in both stills and photo mode. Oh, that's the same one. Stills and video mode for the Samsung NX1 that just came out, uh, the Red Epic, and the Canon 7D Mark II. And this is the MX sensor, for anybody wondering. And why are we comparing the red is because we most importantly want to see if this can work as a video and stills camera, just the same as we are with this one and with this one. So with that, we'll go into our first point. So honestly, all right, well, let's talk about low light first. Uh, these are all APS-C sensors. Uh, this is a 1.5 crop, this is a 1.6, and this is going to be the best in low light. Um, this is the second best, it's slightly better than this, but maybe by like a third of a stop. It's not, it's not noteworthy better. And drawbacks just, about that also is it's not going to be as detailed though. It handles the noise phenomenally. The Samsung definitely does, but when it comes to detail, granted you'll have those red and blue green specks and stuff in yeah. the noise, but um, Canon's still a tad bit sharper. Granted, I was actually I I actually was surprised with both of these. I didn't think either of them handled the noise as well as I thought they might. Yeah. Given the A7S being out and that that kind of technology being available, I thought maybe there'd be a bigger step up, but it's really, I mean, I could pull out a 60D and it's going to be close still. Yeah. They all, you know, you go above 1600, even at 1600, I mean, to me, I don't know, I'm picky, it's a little, it's, it's ugly at 1600 for both of them, but this one... I think deals with ISO better actually uh, than this. Do you think this one's better? No, just you can you can see the grain in the 7D Mark II a little bit more. I mean, it's but me, I don't mind I don't mind the grain in that I as like much. It. With this, I see more of a lack of detail. Yeah, and it kind of again can't. It seems like Canon's finally picking everything up to. To me, I, I like the sensors on the Nikon's. We're not talking about Nikon's at this minute. Well, we did have the D810. Yeah, we just got about two weeks ago, and we compared that to the 5D Mark, Mark III, III that I had, um, that I've and been using. I was a big fan. I wanted the Nikon to win, and it did in a lot of respects. But uh, I mean, I'm I'm more of a video guy than photo, so I kind of wanted something that works for video. I just returned the Nikon because it was expensive for for a minimal advantage. I think for for what I'm looking for. Yeah, but I've always thought that Canon or Nikon always had the better sensor that could deal with the noise. Um, they could deal with just a little bit more crisper images. I've always thought versus right. the Canons. I've always been the reason why I'm a Canon fan is the durability, robustness. I've broken two d eight hundred es never broken my mark three and stuff like that off of even the exact same fall and stuff like that so i've always gone durability versus image quality granted so i've never broken a camera so i i, I could care less about durability It'd be yeah. made of plastic for me but that's but. all that's the only reason why i've always liked canon granted if nikon could pick their game up on the sports side of things and yeah i think That'd that's well. That's something we should talk about. Uh, both of these cameras are uh, surprisingly, well, not surprisingly, and surprisingly disappointing in dynamic range. Um, yes. It is even worse on the Samsung than it is on the Canon. The Canon has made little to no improvement in dynamic range on their di uh, DSLRs, whereas the Nikon D810 had way more. Dynamic yeah, well, about another two about to three, three stops. stops from so. like 11 to 14. And this one, we don't have an official rating on it yet, but 
I'm gonna guess like eight. I can't pull I'm my gonna guess highlights eight. out. I can't pull my shadows or anything. Yeah. Uh, when you when you expose for anything bright or even in the middle, the blacks are they're 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 toast. They're yeah. gone. You cannot bring anything remotely close to black. Is like crushed down below the earth somewhere. I've yeah. never seen anything that bad with blacks, and hopefully, I'm I'm actually hoping I can go through this. And, and we do there's... shoot. We do shoot on a flat, very very flat profile. Yeah. Um, this so is that's... this is the typical Canon flat. You know. Yeah. Minus usually... four, minus four, minus two, zero. Well, then... I do. I usually do the um, Canon neutral. I take off sharpening, and then I do minus two for the saturation. Yeah. And that's how I've always shot from both my video and my photography, and I go through post and. If I need to bump up saturation, go plus 10, plus 20. Same thing with vibrance, plus 10, plus 20. Yeah. Um, and then plus 10, plus 20 for contrast and um, clarity and stuff in camera raw. But... Well, that's something we should point out, too, is in this one, it has a lot more flexibility with the uh, settings for what mm -hmm. you can do. You can make this... Uh, Horribly, horribly flat, and horribly in a <laughs> horribly in a good way. I mean, you can make it almost monochrome. Yeah. Yes, almost monochrome, monochrome, but it's picking up color. So that is pretty cool for video, I thought. But we'll talk about that later. For photos, you don't want to make it as flat as it can be. It's just, uh, it's super. It's the craziest flat I've ever seen. It's more flat than the straight raw out of the epic. Yeah or red log film, um, it is, yeah, flat as this table, so, um, I guess, so basically I, we should point out that the sharpness on our photo test, so you're at negative four, which is the whole way off, right? Yeah. As, as low as you can go on the Canon. Well, no, I'm, I'm two up from the lowest for my sharpness on the Canon's. Okay, um, which is what I was. This goes to negative nine. I put it at negative seven. Yeah. And I believe at some point I changed it to negative five. I'm not sure where, but it didn't seem to make a big difference. But you can definitely tell that maybe the sharpness in this when you're shooting photos should be up to more. zero, possibly. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe zero, higher. maybe even higher. Even though if you're going for, you know, the flat look and everything, it's just that you might... Um, get nothing in focus at all if, yeah. you, if you let the sharpening go all the way down. All that is uh, awesome for video, but right now we're just talking about photos. So I guess also with the low light, we could bring up um, studios. We did take both. Well, we actually yes. took all three um, and did kind of a little studio test. Um, so we're and, using Alien B 1600s, yeah, three so of them. we had three of those. Um, Cyber Commanders, so we could do wireless um, yep. type deals. Um, drawback, I guess. We had, a, we had a model, just typical portrait shoot, basically. Yeah. Um, so I'll really... talk about, um, you were using the 7D Mark II during that shoot, yep. and I used the Samsung. And we obviously had to use them separate because we only had one Cyber Commander. But this is where the Samsung really let me down because it's supposed to have what is it what's the 205 what is it 205 cross point it's supposed to be crazy in autofocus it's supposed to blow the 70 mark ii out of the water yeah 205 phase detections and 209 contrast detection okay that's great that's a lot but uh they don't work so they don't work well they at don't. least in the studio so you're right like, Obviously, uh, you're gonna have your your strobes. They're gonna go off, and they're gonna be brighter than what your usually your model lamp is, or something like that. Or yeah. even your model lamp will usually turn off when you're. And I, firing. I was shooting on the eighty five one four, and you were yeah. shooting on. I was similar? just doing my Tamron seventy or twenty four to seventy okay. um, two eight DISP lens that so now, I'm kind of falling in love with. So I was looking through this viewfinder, which is the OLED viewfinder. And I went, I was going all the way from 1.4 and adjusting the lights all the way to f22. And the issue I had even at 1.4, which makes no sense to me, is that 
this could not focus on anything. It was, mm -hmm. it, it would, uh, he actually thought I was rechecking my focus a bunch of times. No, it was just dead missing. It would go, say this is the focus point, it would just hunt, hunt, hunt. It was embarrassing. It took like five minutes to focus anywhere close. And the brightest modeling light was behind uh, the talent. So I was actually focusing just on the hair so I could focus on anything at all. Mm, I mean, we and that's not, and I want to focus on the eye, not yeah. not the hair. So, I, but the eye was not. Watt, they're fifty-five an watt model lamps. So I mean, they're yeah, fairly bright. Model right lamps. at one four, I should be able to focus on that. Yeah, agreed. Okay, well, even at one four, I could barely focus after it missed fifty million times, and I feel stupid. Then uh, it finally lock onto something, and I would hold that down with my life. But then, right after it focuses, the screen goes completely black in the OLED and in live view. So I had to adjust my framing, and I'm just I'm guessing at that point. And that's the drawback and, about the OLED displays is you're seeing exactly what the sensor is seeing. So you're not going through mirrors and just seeing what the lens is seeing. You're actually seeing right. So if I sensor. It, basically to pull that off with uh, this camera, and it would still it, it'd still be hunting forever. Um, I would have to use constant video lights to do all my photo shoots, which I don't want to do because they're hot. Yeah. And the model's got to sit there for a long time. And... So I guess in the studio side of things, the... Yeah, this is basically... I would call this unusable in the studio. It was embarrassing, and I don't even care. These are all my cameras. I was embarrassed. Yeah. Because it was like... I had to start pretending that I, or I'd start suggesting that the model move a different way while I'm just hunting for focus because it was so bad. Mm -hmm. I switched to manual focus uh, like almost right away. <laughs> yeah. But since we were doing the tests on that, I, I went back. But even though in manual focus, though, I still can't see. I'm still looking through the OLED and I'm seeing black. So then I'm focusing completely blind and I'm framing completely blind. Mm -hmm. So... In a studio with strobes, the 7D Mark II, and anything with, you know, a anything typical pen of prism no, Anything wins. with a normal DSLR, SLR is going to be a little bit better than the mirrorless OLED yes. ones. Now, but I have had mirrorless cameras with OLEDs. I've had some of the Sonys, and I still have some of them, and they don't do what this does. It doesn't go to black. It will do something to help you out. It will jack up the ISO, whatever it has to do, so you can see something. Yeah. It's still not great. This is still better, but you can actually focus, and you can see, and you can frame things, and then it will just turn all that stuff off when you go to take the picture. Mm -hmm. This one, just black. You're, you're just guessing. You're shooting in the dark, so... That was a, a huge disappointment for me, because... Um, Basically, if you can't do studio shoots, there's the there's the money part of photo shoots for me. So, uh, as far as photos for this camera, that that's out. I was actually I bought this with no intention of keeping it. Um, yeah. I bought this to tide me over till this got here, uh, just so I'd have a new camera to play with. And now I'm actually keeping it because of that studio test that failed and I could I could never have you know a, a new client and sit there and take five minutes to focus on one yeah, shot I think when me, they're not even moving I think it took for I think I did about 10 15 mm -hmm. shots um for different poses and things like that and it probably took about an hour and a half um yeah just because I was I was messing around and um, I did I did about three shots and it took me about two hours two and yeah. a half hours just because, yeah, I was oh, pretty much able to an entire another the session that I've done. Yeah, the camera was so. not helping me at all. And then I actually did my session first, and then we switched to his. And um, but then I I saw how fast it was auto focusing, and I just wanted to go hide in a cave. Yeah. So, so that's so this is out for me as far as studio quality being being studio quality. You know, photography camera, but because with sure. strokes, yeah, and I I don't think really Samsung has said exactly what that camera is meant for. I know it's their flagship. Yeah, they um, they while well, they did promote it a lot, 
I mean, with all these specs, 205 phase detection, 209 contrast, yeah. um, it um, seemed to be like they focused a lot on the photo side. Yeah. They're, like, they're, you know, they're talking about their speed burst up to 15 frames a second. And we'll, we'll get into that later. But um, they were selling it as a video camera and a stills camera. Like, I'd say equally strong campaign. They weren't really... Yeah. Uh, if I were them, I would have campaigned more on the video side, and Definitely. we'll we'll get into that because all of these stats on paper, this camera smokes this camera. It it was immediately called the seventy Mark II killer, and I was laughing. I thought that was great because I'm not a huge Canon fan, but yeah. <laughs> uh, but this turned out when I actually got my hands on the camera, it just um. Every expectation I had just went down the tubes really yeah. quickly. And I will say, and he's a Canon, Canon fan, so he just laughed at me. It was so embarrassing. I hate that camera. And with Canon, <laughs> I mean, I've I've had the, the Mark III and things like that, um, and I've had the I've used the 1DX. Yeah, I had um, the 6D. I've had a, we've, had, we've, we've had about every the camera there is. I also had the, or was able to use one of my friends just Mark One version of the 7D. Um, and I will say right now, just with, I'm, I'm assuming that it looks, if I was, when I was looking at the sensors and stuff, I'm going to assume that Canon used the same kind of 6D sensor and they just did the um, APS-C version of the 6D sensor. Um, and then just kind of robust a few things and took out with the processor, you have what, the Digix 6 plus, I think, processors, so you have two I of those. So, yeah. um, so it's going to be, I was pretty impressed and I, after messing around, yeah, the low light um, isn't quite there when it's coming to the ISO and things like that. But, but you have to expect that with APS-C. I will say... You don't it, buy APS-C no, for but, it to be a low light killer. No, know? but even then, I mean, it was very marginal. I can put up my Mark or my Mark III and the 70 Mark II, and I can put those side by side and still pretty much push the same limits that I would. Yeah. I'd just have to go, instead of maybe 640 ISO on the... Um, it might be like a stop. I'm yeah, guessing. not even that. I don't even think I'd have. That's to the thing. It's coming up to so. these these APS-C and you know APS-C mirrorless cameras are. I had not. More. Uh, people will argue this to the death, and you guys can do that in the comments. Go for it. Uh, but they but they're not that far off in low light anymore as they used mm -hmm. to be from full frame. I know it's a different look. I know. It, it, yes, yeah, I know what full frame is. I, yeah, your sensors okay. are going to have bigger pixels, but to collect the light. But beyond that, I'm very, very impressed. Beyond that, I've no what I've noticed I've, about full frame versus like APS-C is that okay, you'll get that extra stop of light mm -hmm. or you know whatever it is from the from the full frame. But when you start pushing as far as far as ISO performance, you start pushing them on either. I see about equal results. Obviously, it's still about that one stop better in in the full frame. But is it worth like triple the money to get a full frame, and then all your glass has to be more expensive? And I would all rather that? spend. I'd, say I'd no. rather I'd, I'd rather say spend no. my money on my glass than I would on my cameras, anyways. And yes. I know a lot of my friends, and I see it all the time on the forums and um, pages and group pages and stuff. Hey, what full frame camera should <clears> I buy? <throat> I'm gonna be using just my normal kind of kit lens in a way. And stuff like that. And well, it's that's, like, a, that's a ridiculous post. Yeah, everyone's got to respond to that. Spe with, spend your money on the buy glass, a nice lens. Get a buy one get a, prime. Yeah, get a phenomenal lens and just go from there. Because I've seen, I think, granted, I'm not going to do too much reviews, but I've even seen what digital rev or whatever. They've even done the little comparison, crappy body with. Phenomenal L lens versus the 1DX, I think, with just the Nifty 50. Uh, crap lens um, will always lose. Yeah, and it just they completely ruined that camera. And it's like, okay, you just spent, what, almost now 7000 I think they have it dropped down to a little bit. Yeah. Well, six grand right now for the um, 1DX. But that with the $100 lens versus a $700 body with a 70 to 200 2000 what twenty two hundred dollar lens? That's phenomenal, and it makes your images so much more beautiful. Um, but that's a whole another 
topic. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, there are okay. There's a couple of just simple random things that I want to point out. Uh, this is fourteen ninety nine body only, which is great. And this is what eighteen ninety nine. Yeah. Well, 18, or seventeen ninety nine. Yeah. So, so you're spending another three hundred dollar difference. Three hundred is more for this. Um, which this back typical non articulating screen, just like yeah. the five D and the original seven D. Um, this one has kind of the Sony style, doesn't come out the whole way, doesn't do the whole selfie thing, it doesn't, it's not a 6D type, but, you know, you can go down, and you can go straight like that, and that's it. Unfortunately, you can't flip it around, so when you have your camera packed, it doesn't get scratched or anything, but that's the same with that, too. Yeah. I will say I did. I was impressed with the Samsung styles, how it is so flexible and you can change everything. Yes. Um, but obviously the nice thing about Canon is if you get used to, let's say, a T3i or something, you can move up to Mark III or the 7Ds or even a 1DX and you still have all the same button layouts kind of general area. Yeah, it's just going to change that, Yeah, the main dial. I will say the nice thing about the 7D Mark II that I kind of fell in love with is I do mainly focus on sports, mountain biking and skiing and snowboarding. Um, with the 7D Mark II, you have the little switch um, and that changes your kind of focus points and you can tell it, hey, do all of that instead of actually going through all your settings and yeah, things. I will so, say yeah, that was the quick. that that was nice. You can do on the fly. You can. So I'm hoping really that they maybe bring that. that to like the next Mark or Five D or. That's also or kind something. of they had the same sort of thing on this. When you hit the OK button in the center, mm -hmm. it does the same sort of thing. But it's divided by two buttons because you have to hit the AF button, and this one this one will move it around. Yeah. But it won't change modes like to AF area mode like that will. Mm -hmm. So that you still have to go into the menu for here. So that that's one difference. But so I, I will say about this camera, um, I had the NX30 before it, but I don't think that's why it made this uh, quickly comfortable for me because I'm used to Canon cameras, DSLRs for for the longest time. I've had Nikons too, and it's not that hard to adjust. Um, it's, it's a little weird, but the Canon, I, I basically set this up, and I, I didn't even put that many custom functions, but you can set this up to, you'll forget that you're shooting with a Samsung. It mm -hmm. feels just like a Canon. You can have the dials do the exact same things. Their menu layout is fairly well. Yeah, I've never used it's, a Samsung. It's, and it's it, just four menus. Yeah, and, and I've never used a Samsung in simple. my life, and it wasn't too hard. As I yeah, was, it's, I was worried, and I mean, I've gone from the Nikons to the Canons, back to the Nikon, back to the Canons, and stayed with the Canons now. I've gone from, what, a D40 to a D90X, which was a night and day, not too bad of a difference. Um, but for a night and day <clears> difference, <throat> going from like a D90X to the um, D800E when it first came out, that was like, what the heck is this? And I also <laughs> had the Mark III with me, and so I mean, I'm looking at both of them, and I'm like, uh, what the heck? Um, and then I also had a 60D at that time, um, so I'd go look at my Canons, and my Canons were pretty much 90% the same, but button layouts and menu options with the Nikons, that's the only drawback I don't like about really yeah, and with the Nikons. Yeah, I can show some at the top of these quick. Uh, basically just reversing the mode dial. And mm -hmm. then this dial here, when you turn it um, on this Samsung, it changes your drive, which is pretty sweet. And on top, it's got four different options, which I believe you can change. Yeah. But I just left them because they're pretty good. It's autofocus, ISO, white balance, and then the metering mode. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty good. And then I changed this dial here to ISO. Yeah. When you can, you can make it whatever you want. You could because uh, default it was what aperture, and this is also aperture. So I was like, all right, I'll try something else here. Put ISO there, and it's pre pretty nice looking at the meter. And I usually um, do the little scroll wheel, like your thumb scroll wheel, as the ISO because yeah. I mean you're not really changing your aperture usually. I always try to right. You always want to shoot at your. I mean, I mean you pick your to, aperture. Yeah. 
So I usually go with ISO first, my aperture, and then shutter speed or whatever I'm trying to shoot. But Yeah, I'm trying to think uh, what else. I guess Before we go into autofocus and drive. Oh, oh beyond this. Okay, let's go back to when we did the studio shoot with uh, the portrait session. Okay, we also did model. throw up the red. We did use the red, and... It mm -hmm. was it was fun and awesome, and we took was, some video and some stills, yeah. and um, I I I had, I've already posted one of the stills because I really liked it, mm -hmm. and we we tried a couple different things because we I had him uh, pressing the pilot on all lights with the cyber commander, um, which can be controlled through this, and you can oh, trigger that, somehow. but I think I need a module. Or maybe I can send a signal. Whatever. We didn't want to deal with it. We just wanted to send some flashes through while I'm rolling video. And we tried different frame rates. We found the best to be about 60 and 60. Yeah, so... For shutter angle. 360 or angle. Not, sh not, not... Yeah. 360 shutter angle or 160th of a second shutter speed and 60 frames a second um, to capture the flashes. Anything that had, or lower. Yeah, and also for movement, we also had the model blow some glitter um, yeah. off of a rose. And Which we did that with in, in this photo shoot as yeah. well, and we did with this. So what I liked about it is we did two tests. We did, well, first I was like, let's just do one straight video because it's going to look awesome. Mm -hmm. And we were shooting at 96 frames. And that looked great, obviously. And then, um, then we did one exposed for the modeling lamps. Which this was, I had plenty of light. Like, with, I was surprised. I thought with just the modeling lamps, I'd be clipping shadows. Not even close. I was, I had a good centimeter. I mean, I was exposed all the way to the right. Yeah. And I wasn't even wide open. I was at, I think. We stopped down to about F4, F4 to F5, F5 6. 6. Yeah. Yeah. So we did that one first. And when the flashes went off, it was just a cool effect. And then I exposed for the flashes, and we took the still out from that. Um, it actually ended up capturing one of the lights that was just aimed at the glitter, but it was also hitting the model, mm -hmm. and it didn't actually capture the backlight, so it wasn't it wasn't the best. Like we, could, it, it still looked awesome. Well, but, and then you still had your key also that had the, right, but it so. only got the modeling light. Well, my key was. The backlight, because we yeah. had a huge, uh, what is it, eight foot octabox? Uh, 150 centimeters, so I had the, six foot or whatever. Yeah, so I had that behind her, and it was wrapping so much that it, it, it was the brightest light, so it was her key light, essentially. But um, it, it didn't pick up the flash from that. It picked up the modeling light, but it still came out yeah, so pretty I cool. Mean, I'd probably use the red if I was if I had to go between the Samsung or the red for. Oh yeah. Uh, so this I, I'd use this for stills. Just over this because I can see. Yeah. This is blind to me. I it was great being able to see with the red. So. Mm -hmm. So I guess now let's talk about. Um, we took and we both. could see. That's why I'm saying this is better in low light. By the way, from that test we had the same lighting, and when I looked. Through here, through the pen and prism, or live view, you could not see nearly as much as you could here. Yeah. Because the modeling lights with this were enough to light the scene. We didn't even need flashes. But then that was also your setup. Because I had to stop setups. down to F11, I think, for the... Uh, and then usually my... safer flashes. Yeah. And usually my setup for lighting was always with the key light being in front of the model, off to one of the sides or something. So right. for me, that's... I don't, everyone has their own kind of setups and things like that. So, but I did have that uh, one strobe that was blasting uh, for the glitter, and it was also hitting her almost as a kicker. Yeah. So that was enough to focus on her eye. That should have been. That's partially why I put it there and a little bit on her face, is so that this could focus. It did not help at all. Mm -hmm. I not once focused on her eye. I don't think. Yeah, I just got her hair light, whatever was lit, any anything I could lock onto. Yep. That's why I ended up stopping down to f twenty two because I was hoping it could maybe focus at f twenty two. So but not great, yeah. But beyond the studio, though, we also then took um, our dogs to the dog park and took the MX one and the Mark two. Um, okay, so we're gonna get into. Park. 
autofocus and uh, high speed uh, drive settings. Yes. Call it. Yeah. High speed burst. Continuous shooting. Yeah. So. Okay. So. I'll I want to go that. first off the bat. I'll redo the, what, what I just said that? again. Uh, where was the needed? Focus. And uh, one thing we should point out is this is 28 megapixels, and this is now, what, yeah. 22? 20. 20. 20. It went from 18 to 20, right? Yeah. And this is 28 megapixels. Yeah. If anyone cares. And this can do... Well, hang on. Well, 10 frames a second well, continuous well, shooting? Give me a second. All right. So, um, when it comes to the focus thing, out of the studio, though, we did take the... Samsung and the Canon out to the dog parks with our dogs and yes, and capture natural dogs. daylight. Yeah. yeah, so um, got a lot of shots of the dogs running towards us is what we were trying to do and see how much we could track as we did a you know a ten frame per second burst. Yeah, so um, we did try to keep the cameras the same. So the Canon's ten frames a second. Um, um, yeah, this the NX th one this does can, go up to fifteen. Yeah, but I said it. 210. Uh, I did a I did a few shots with it at 15 just mm -hmm. to see those extra moments that you'll get. But I set this to 10. It, you can set it all the way down to eight. But I'll tell you one thing: it does not improve the uh, buffer. A little bit, it, but yeah, not, not, what not you compared. Would think. Yeah, so I mean, I'd I'd rather stay at 10 and just get that extra those extra two frames. Yeah, um, yeah, 10 is better than 15. But like going all the way down to eight. I thought maybe this would buffer as long as that or closer to it. It still would always stop about a full two seconds short. And that's even with the Canon, with the that, SD card. Yes. If you were to throw an SD card, granted the Canon does have the... Yeah, open um, up the side of that. This is SD, the Samsung is SD card only, no CF card. So it has, and on top of that, it has a smaller buffer. Yeah. And it's writing to a slower card. So that one hands down in how long you could shoot 10 frames a second for. Yeah. And we tested that a few times. And we'd keep the ISO set settings the same. So we did keep the ISO around three, um, what, 320, if I remember right. Um, yeah. Because obviously the higher the ISO, the less buffer you're going to get because the processor is going to have to go through a little bit more. Right. Um, so we did try to I keep that. I think we started that. at 100, then went up. Yeah. Um, Actually, no, that was where it was different. You were at 320 right away, but you were at a higher shutter speed. Yeah, so I was did, at 125 and at 100 ISO. Yeah, and usually I'll shoot at so about 200 different. is usually my minimal for shutter speed. Yeah. Um, but once we, even when we got um, you back up to the same settings, yeah. still with F4, just to make sure <coughs> that that's kind of the sweet spot I've seen with lenses Most and glasses lenses will be sh should be sharp at f4 yeah so trying to counsel that out because i do use a tamron lens um there's 24 to 70 just because i've always liked that um kind of side of things and it's usually about 700 dollars cheaper than the camera. oh and i should say for this test uh the dog park test I was shooting on the um, Samsung S lens, the 16 to 50. Yeah. The 2.8, or actually it's 2.0 to 2.8. So it's not a constant, but it's not a bad variable. It's not no. a kit lens. And so, um, so they're, isn't for that the portrait best shoot, I shot on, well, they have the 50 to 150, mm -hmm. 2.8. So, I mean, that's debatable. I don't know. But it, yeah, it's their best 16 to 50. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the portrait shoot I was on the eighty five one four prime, but the, everything else we shot was on the sixteen to fifty. Mm -hmm. So, so when it comes to autofocus, um, or I guess we've already covered the buffer. Um, so yeah, the auto buffer was about a two full seconds longer, so you get an extra twenty shots on there. Yeah, compared to this, and the, here here's another thing I noticed though um, at the dog park with these two. When my um, when I was done, my burst ran out. It took about twice as long to be ready to shoot again mm -hmm. on on my Samsung. And that's than, even when than it even, did on this because I'd hear him snapping if, off pictures, and I'm sitting here watching the light blink. And that's I can't even shoot. if you use the SD cards also. Yeah. So um, which is weird because um, I guess Samsung 
took the cheap route on their, uh, maybe it's not a true UH-1, or I think it's supposed to be it's a UH-1. UHS-1 and 2, it supports. Yeah, so, um, and I was using, we were using the same SD cards, the SanDisk Extreme 95 megabytes a second, SanDisk Extreme Pro, blah, 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 64 yeah. gig. Yeah. So, and then that was our test, but usually I'll use my Lexar 1000XX or 1066 or whatever time, CF cards and stuff. But so basically once you put the CF in the Canon, it blows this away as far as burst rate, buffer. Which I did see. The a buffer is better no matter what. And I did see Samsung trying to go after the kind of sports market. Oh, yeah. In their commercials, they were showing, like, a car racing by. Yeah, you had your that Red stuff. Bull um, Rampage kind of biker doing mm -hmm. the drop and stuff, um, which I was like, cool, it's going to do that. But, again, that's where the Canon's always been <coughs> on top and why I've always chosen Canon's over Nikon's and stuff like that. But so we should talk about how, let's see, how, um, what was I going to say? I guess do focus. Yes, how did, the, how did the focus actually perform when we did the burst rates at the dog park? Because we were tracking dogs, and I, had, I was trying with this. You were you, were you in single settings. shot? I always, I, well, I always do spot metering. Um, I, which I, both, I did spot both, metering as both well. Both cameras were always set on spot metering. And then um, I did... Um, you tried your yeah, different... one spot focus. Yeah, so I always do center. one spot focus. Um, usually the center is always the best on all cameras. Yeah, so, I tried it in the center and it was doing pretty was well. It? Now, I'll tell you this. In the dog park, it, seem, it seemingly was nailing every shot. Yeah. It was telling me every shot was locked on. Which... It was going really quick, really quick, but way opposite of that portrait shoot. I was a little oh, excited about it. I was like, all right, this might... Uh, might yeah, when we were done walking, we were like all thing. static, but hey, it might have actually worked. And we're like, right. okay, cool, it wasn't worth the... Or it wasn't a loss or anything. Um, right, but we went through the photos, and this is what happens um, with the Samsung in drive mode, basically. Your first shot will be the most in-focus shot. As you get further and further away, if say, say the dog's coming at you. As the dog gets closer to you, in this example, it will become more and more out of focus. Almost, yeah, so it, it's like, the here's focus. the dog, and then here's the focus, and it would be like dead on, but the dog would take off, and then the focus would just lag behind and never catch up. Yeah. And that was and at 15 just... frames a second, 10, 8, I tried 12. Yeah. And the dogs, I mean, they weren't the fastest dogs. They were Border Collie mixes. So, I mean, they are well, still phenomenal fast Greyhound. Or... Well, that's the, that's the other thing. Some were just walking slowly, too. Yeah. And that's even with, even with that, where it shouldn't be an issue, the Samsung still, the first shot, tack sharp, and then it's like, okay, it starts... what's going on? It, it's yeah. behind. Just a dog walking, you know, that's pretty pathetic. And it, it, it's against... Really against what they showed in their commercial. Yeah. With that race car. Yeah, mm -hmm. that guy waves and stuff. and He's all in focus the whole time. And they're using area there. And that's why... And so did, I, I did switch yeah, to area. You tried. Because I wanted to test that out. Because we have 205 phase detection. 209 contrast detection. And I believe there's about 151. Somewhere around there. If I'm wrong, sorry. It, it's somewhere around there. 161, 167. I don't know. Uh, but there's a lot. There's over double what yeah. that has of that are both phase and con on contrast detection. Yeah. So, so it was supposed to be amazing. So yeah, I I, I switched to area mode, and um, I was using the OLED viewfinder, and I tried live view too, but that was just even slower. Um, but it was still saying it was locking on, mm -hmm. and it just and basically the same same results. First shots would be in focus, except this one, it, it was showing me on the screen, you know, the different squares would move w right with the dog, and I was like, oh, this is killing it. It's nailing every shot. Uh, we reviewed them, first one sharp, same thing with, here goes the dog, goes, here comes the focus, and yeah, it never it just, catches up. It keeps getting sh farther back and things like that until the dog completely stops, and then the camera 
double checks itself and yeah. is like, oh, where are the cannon? And that made no difference at 10, 8, 15 frames a second. No matter what, it yeah. was saying it's in focus and it's not. Yeah. And how did the cannon do? Canon, I mean, obviously you're not going to get every... I'm not using the Canon L, so that's already going to be one key point that I should mention is I'm not using the Canon L glass, so that's <coughs> usually on any of my cameras I've ever used. It's always been pretty spot on. But again, out of a 30 round burst or something, I still maybe lost five or six shots. And we got about 50 seconds total. So we got about 50 raw images. We are always, we're shooting in raw. Yeah. We have to mention that, not so, JPEG. Yeah, we do, we do shoot in raw. Um, yes, because if, in, if you shoot in JPEG in this, you can get a longer buffer, but this still has an even, this is like a never ending buffer in JPEG. Yeah. I believe it was like something ridiculous. Yeah. That's... But we're not talking about JPEGs. We're talking about RAW. So, um, we were going through the 7D Mark II, and there's a couple of them. I'd say, I'd say about 80% focus. in focus. But it wasn't, it wasn't like this one where you just see it failing and see how it's failing. It would just miss sometimes. Yeah. And just it'll, be off. It'll do just a back focus off. really fast, and then it'll catch back up. Granted, that still also could be the lenses and stuff like that. Right, there's a lot of variables there, but there's no doubt this did the same thing. But I did try the 85 then, too. and uh, Maybe I didn't. No, you, no you I just, didn't. I wanted just, to keep it with uh, zooms. Yeah. And but this consistently keeping... did the same thing, and this consistently did the same thing, but not as this. It did yeah. get about we did for 80 to zooms. 90% of the shots in focus and they're yeah. and they're tack sharp and that's where we discussed um we'd actually like to go back and look a little bit at raising the sharpness because this goes down to negative nine i believe yeah and maybe if i raise the sharpness maybe it would help i personally don't think so because that's not the issue it's missing focus yeah and it's I mean, not it's that still... it's not that it was in focus and it wasn't as sharp as that it's that the focus was missing. Mm -hmm. You could see the part, you know, on the grass yeah, you where, it the grass focus, where it was in focus, and it was always behind the dog. Yeah. So I honestly don't think that would help. It's it's something I'm going to try, but at this point, I've already ruled out that um, this one is so bad at photos that I'm actually going to keep this one now to be my photo camera, and I'm going to use this for another purpose that we'll talk about soon. And, I mean, I guess we kind of hit all of those points. Yeah, are there any other um, points that we want to talk about as far as photos? They both uh, lack dynamic range. We already talked about that. Do, 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 um, do. I guess maybe lens options. Should we talk about those? Um, lens options? Yeah, we can. I mean, people know what there are. There's, yeah, okay, so the main offerings from Samsung right now, and they're doing a good job. This is way better than, like, the Sony e-mount. The new email. Sorry to <laughs> sorry Sony. I I love Sony. Hey, but, we are shooting on a Sony. Yeah, we're shooting on an FS one hundred right now on the uh, close up here, and then a Panasonic. We're 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 not that biased. Okay, <laughs> so, so uh, what were we talking about? Uh, lenses and glass. Lenses. Okay, this came out by the time this launched, which was Last I don't know. Week. I pre ordered it back in June or July, like six could. months ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As soon as you could, I was like, boom, I'm on this camera. Um, and I had I, I had so high hopes and anyways. Um, it didn't fail us in, high, in our all hopes though. No, because I thought it was gonna be great for photos and not so much. Um, so this came out, when this came out, uh, the 16 to 50, the S is like the Canon L series. So yeah. I'll just say it that way. Uh, it had the 16 to 50, S, which is a f 2.0 to 2.8 which I, it's, it, that's mm. cool but it's still kind of annoyed i would have i would have kept it at 28 if, i would have kept I, it at 28 too i was samsung i would have just because you can there. get you can get um f2 up until about 28 millimeters yeah. and then anything over 28 it goes to 2.8 and that's such a jump that's a full stop mm -hmm. so it was still annoying because I'd zoom oh. in and I have to adjust. It's a full stop difference. I mean, maybe not. Maybe yeah, fix it in post. But I'm I'm a fix it in pre kind of guy. 
you can always fix it in post too, but yeah, I, I prefer to do it, you know, why wouldn't you do the best you can on set? But then again, I, I'm also always the person that likes to stop down to that F4, F8 kind of area for me personally, just to get as sharp of an image as possible because yeah. even unless you're using a Zeiss Otis for photography side of things, which are pretty much the creme de la creme uh, photography lenses, granted, yeah, that's why they're three plus grand a piece, but unless you're using that, you're not going to be able to shoot and have crystal clear image on wide open. So Right, so I just, I, I just don't get why they did it because it, I mean, if you go to, if you set it to 2.8 while well, it's at 16, I mean, I guess it gives you options. Because really, if you set it to 2.8 while well, it's at 16, if you zoom in, it's not going to change. When yeah. you zoom back out, it'll stay at 2.8. So, actually, why, they, they kind of just gave you more have, options there. Why have, do the, not have a fixed aperture? That's one thing that I I guess so, I mean, because it gives you a stop extra from 16 to 28, which... I guess that's kind of cool because I I didn't think about it till just now, but if I dial down to eight at sixteen, I would have a constant two eight lens. Yeah, but if you, if you look at all, if you look at um, Tamron, and you look at Tokinas, you look oh, right. at they're Canons, always constant. I think if they just the realized they could give stuff. you an extra stop there, so they did. Yeah, and but I don't see why. But based on the theory that you can set it to two eight. Yeah. Zoom into 50, you'll stay at 2.8. Zoom all the way back out to 16 or whatever you want, it will stay at 2.8. If it automatically dropped the 2.0 every time, that'd be annoying. Um, but yeah, it's... But it, if it's their premium lens, I would have just kept it at 2.8. Yeah, I, I don't get it. It's it's just weird. It's kind of a weird thing, but it, some people might like that. It's a full stop. There you go. You know, it... Uh, there's your full stop that you might get by going to full frame or mm -hmm. whatever. Anyways, so that you lens, that. Uh, the 50 to 150, uh, it never came. No. I canceled the order now. Yeah. Um, because I will not be using this for photos. I will be using the 7D Mark II and the Red for photos. And I'm just going to stay with my Canons. Um, I am... What you own none of right now. Bias, yes. <laughs> I did kind of give away the Mark III to a good friend of mine. So, uh, okay, he's going to so love me a long time. I'll get back to this. Uh, 50, <laughs> 50 to 150, uh, 2.8 constant mm -hmm. is out now, I believe. It, it must be back-ordered a little bit still. I think it's you still have to pre-order Get in line, because I'm still six months in line, I don't have it. But I stepped out of line like three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can well, take Well, last this week when we got, because we just got right. this oh, okay. last, last week, Friday. Yeah. I actually canceled it before that for uh, financial reasons that we won't discuss. Not initially, but... I, I mean, did, well, I had two of them ordered. I yeah. canceled one. Anyways, let's not go there. Um, it also came out with, um, there, there was a lot of NX... Uh, lenses. There's there's a nine. There's a thirty. There those are NXMs. I'm not sure if that even goes on to NX. I don't know what NXM is, but there is an NX45 that I had that can shoot in 2D and 3D, and I have a 3D 4K TV. So that was kind of cool, mm -hmm. but not cool enough. I returned it. Um, yeah, you don't. Right now, then, Samsung doesn't have all the mounts for different. I mean, you have to pretty much stay with Samsung. No, well, not true. I have adapters for all my Canon lenses and all my Nikons. Yeah, but without the adapters, you don't they, have as much room like you do right this second. I mean, it's kind of like Sigma, where they have their DSLRs well, and you can only use Sigma they are dumb, lenses. They're dumb adapters, so it has to be fully manual lenses, yeah. which is what I have, so that's that's cool for me. And that we'll get into more of that when we get to the video side of things. But um, So 45, they have a regular 45 that's not a 2D, 3D, it's just... A 45, uh, 1.8, mm -hmm. and then they have the, that, that's pretty cheap, it was like 300 bucks, and then the 85, 1.4, which I really liked for this, except it didn't, I thought it would speed up the focus a little, because you could open up to 1.4 with the, the OLED, and uh, not really, no, no, it just made it harder, because it's, it was adding more, or less depth of the field, and it was hunting like a madman. I, I just shot some tests over Thanksgiving, 
Yeah. And yeah. But I'd those shots, about, those shots came out. I think they came out phenomenal. Th- they came out pretty regular. well, but the noise was awful. I thought. Yeah. And when I say awful, it's just as awful as this is awful, and this would be awful as if you crank up the noise. I'm not a big fan of let's crank up the ISO and make the room look bright when it's dark. Mm-hmm. I like to keep it dark. If the room's dark, let, you know, let shadows be shadows, let black be black. So, anyways, back to the other lenses. Um, yeah, 85.14, which was about, what was that, 900, 700, 900, something? Yeah. One of those two. Um, and that, is that about it? So you don't have as many lens options as you do with the Canon. Well, or Nikon. Yeah, clearly not with Canon because they have a bajillion lenses hopefully, and so does Nikon. I will say hopefully but, Samsung will allow other manufacturers to make some. I know, yeah. I think Rokinon is oh, right yeah, now making starting, a few they're things. They're starting to make some, I, I forget if I looked at Sigma or Sigma or Rokinon, but I know Rokinon is making some NX mounts. Yeah. So it is becoming, uh, you're getting a lot more lenses than you were, like I said, again, from the Sony E-mount that just kind of never happened. Yeah. So... That was... Throw well, they, 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 speed they, booster they, on it. Yeah, they turned... It, well, you had to buy the LA to EA adapter, and now it's alpha so and E-mount, but you have to use an alpha... Well, you have to use the E-mount lens with an alpha, alpha adapter. Yeah. <laughs> okay, screw all that. It's... I'm sorry, but that's stupid, I think. Like, make some lenses for your cameras. Yeah. Or make them like a different mount for a lens manufacturer, you know? But pick one. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Now, E mount's cool because I shoot video and I use all manual stuff. And you literally can mount everything to E mount. Unlike Canon, where if you have Canon, you're stuck with Canon mount. There's a few options. I've, th- I've thrown but not on, much. I've thrown on like when I was messing around with some of the old Nikon <coughs> kind of fifty mils. Like I had a couple of pre World War Two Nikon glass and stuff. Yeah. Um, and I threw on the little paper thin kind of um, Nikon to Canon mount, and that actually worked oh yes, phenomenal. all right. I do have that too, and then I have like the the Pentacon six to uh, NEX. Oh wait, that's not to, to E mount. I have to E mount to EOS. Yeah. And those um, are for your World War II. That works. Class. What you can't use, though, which are the ones you can't use? I'm trying to think. The ones that it's just, it's not, they protrude too far back. You can, if I remember right, you can also still do PL mounts even to the... I think you, yeah, you can. You have a you dumb can. adapter still also. So you can. really you don't have too much. They do make, thankfully, manufacturers but, but, are making So, them. But the overall comparison is this, which... EOS mount alone already has hundreds and hundreds yeah. and hundreds of lenses. Plus, you can mount, you know, most others, not all onto it. Um, this is not as this comes out with a few lenses, and they're gonna make more. But um, you can't. Not a lot of people are making the mounts for it. You know, not all yeah. the brands like Rokinon, uh, Rokinon's Samyang, making it. No, Rokinon does have the I'm saying goes. not all the brands. All the brands make. Canon, yeah, style you know EOS mount. Not all the brands yet are making NX mount. We'll see if that changes. Uh, it, it, it seems like it might because a couple companies started to. So yeah, but then again, I haven't seen any making autofocus lenses, and that's going to be the issue. So photography wise, it's another downfall. Yeah. Because I have not seen, I mean, obviously the Rokinons are full manual. I don't see like a Sigma or a Tamron or anything you could autofocus with that's not a Samsung. NX. And it could be just Samsung. I mean, I'm not, none of us work there, so we can't say 100%, but it could yeah. be Samsung just Maybe they want it that it. way or... Yeah, because I mean, they do like locking down their stuff. I mean... But I, I have to say with what they came out with, they had a solid, you know, the whole zoom range covered yeah. for you with two lenses, and they're about, I think one was about twelve hundred, and the you're fifty almost, to you're almost fifty to one fifty was right? about sixteen hundred, which is more than this camera, which makes sense. It's it's nice glass, and uh, at least they had those out. Yeah, it's I would not have liked like to see more budget friendly glass though. Also, yeah, that would that would be nice, but 
I, I think it's important that they put out those two because if they didn't put those two out and just had some budget lenses, I wouldn't have bought this at all. But coming out that it's got its like L series, you know, S series lenses that are nice and it, they're, they're already going to be out with the camera, I thought that was a good thing. That was a mm -hmm. plus in the department. Um, yeah. So photo wise, I'd still go with the red or the Canon, but that leaves yeah. video side of things. Do you want to talk about the difference between? Okay, if we're 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 basically ruling this out for uh, photos right now. Okay, not a winner, not a winner. So between, do you want to talk about the technical differences between taking photos on this? Um, I'll talk about the experience, like how, like how of, you know the. Um, like, I'll talk about the convenience of the difference, but can you give the tech spec differences of t pulling stills from 5K on this yeah. versus that? Yeah, so I mean, I have used the RED for a couple of years. Granted, I've never owned one, but I've been able to borrow a few and stuff like that and utilize them in past experiences for the last couple of years. So, I mean, I am fairly competent with REDs. Um, Again, I've had you say fairly confident. What? <laughs> I'm fairly confident. <laughs> you said competent. Oh. I was going to question it either way. All well, right, good. Um, I know 2 plus 2 is 22, so that's really all that exactly. matters for me. So. All right. <laughs> um, but, and then I had Canon. Let's see, I think my first Canon was, what, 2009 before? Well, I think it was, yeah, around 2009 for after my first deployment, but... Um, yeah, so I've been, I'm no both. When it comes to kind of the photography side of things, I do mainly focus more on the kind of extreme sports, skiing, snowboarding, and stuff like that. Um, well, I'm going to talk about that in the usability. I want you to talk about like megapixels versus like resolution wise and okay. megapixels wise, like technical specs. Well, because um, obviously, like, what I mean, why you look on there? If you take this, if you're shooting, if you take the Red Epic and you're shooting biking, snowboarding, whatever, it's why would you not shoot at 96 frames a second? Yeah, 5K. and you can pull out any still. You'll have a billion, and they're you can quick to go through them. You can mm -hmm. even. I mean, we pulled up to the, the flashes from the studio shoot right on the display. But I mean, it's not as painful as going through a, a billion separate shots that you have to scroll through. You can just yeah. go pick a moment. Why would you not use the red? And that's what I want to know technically um, versus that. I guess really the only reason why I'd go more with the Canons versus the red is just price point. I mean... Because basically, all right, if we go back to drive, like doing a drive shoot... A uh, bigger buffer, way, way faster, can go forever. So, what makes this... What are the downfalls, I guess, of the red for stills versus... I guess, really, it's just DSLR. price point. I mean, even... Obviously, if, price point. So, that you're going for, what, about 33 grand for a full... This, mine setup. was 23. I, I, I'm thrifty. It was 23 for... Uh, even with a student discount, you can't get it back. Yeah, I did. I'm gonna love to see the price. I'll show you. But I have the receipts. Well, I'm just going with the basic user if they go and buy red right this second. Right. So for a right. full a full day shoot, um, it's about thirty grand. Yeah, you're you're around thirty grand where a full day shoot on a Canon. Um, oh. I mean, even with let's go with a one DX. Uh, well, let's go with this one. Okay, so you're looking. It's about three thousand. Yeah, three grand. Take four a few grand. zeros away from this one. Yeah. But what I want to know is what the difference is. Okay, here's what I'm so saying. So when it comes to resolution, you're going for full, let's say... Well, let, me, let me ask you a question, because this is what I want to know. If I was going to go, no matter what I'm shooting, um, this beats it in frame rate. It beats it in, I mean, it's usability. It, it's heavy. It's not ergonomical, blah, blah. But um, I, could shoot, I could be shooting 96 frames a second in 5K while this is going to shoot 10. In five K. So and then the buffer for this is infinite. Or until your card runs out. Mm hmm Basically. So it's a hell of a lot longer than this. So why why would I want to take this out if I'm going to a snowboarding session as opposed to this? 
Say I have all the money in the world and I can afford all three okay. of these cameras. You're gonna run out of you're gonna run out of space. So I mean that you're gonna be buying a this? Yes. But I could set it down to twenty frames a second and still be beating this. You're still Steve. gonna have to try to pull focus. So you're gonna need someone to focus on just strictly focus where the cannons that's that. What if you're good at pulling um, focus? Why would I go with the cannon? When it comes to sports your subjects are moving erratic. You can't completely judge right. speed. So, I mean, I'll go and have... You can't, but it does have peaking, which this doesn't. And this does, so that's important. One thing I liked about this, when you manual focus, it has peaking. One thing I do not like about this, when you manual focus with the peaking, as soon as you stop at where your focus point is or wherever you're going to stop, the peaking goes away. So I was constantly retouching it just to see. I almost wanted to snap the photo mm -hmm. right when I got things in focus because after that, it, it it all the peaking disappears. Even that was kind of sidetrack, but yeah. But then you also get another thousand pixels um, for your resolution, so you get um, on this on the can. Yes, so okay. you you get kind of a more top room, and that's even shooting at five K. So even right. if you were to shoot five K on the red. And take stills from that, so you get a thousand more res um, pixels in your image. So you're going, that's, I mean, you're really going 4K, 5K is, or 4K is what, about 7.2 megapixels or whatever to 20 megapixels. So that's right there is already down um, on what, some of that. What about this has 13.5 stops dynamic range available dynamic range yes yeah, so i'd say that has 11 uh not available it has about 11 stops mm. for that it does not seem like it this uh apparent dynamic uh, i don't know i think with dynamic range this one it's, it's clearly dynamic better. range red is so that's another plus even for photos because you get that dynamic range in the photos. It's mainly just the focus speed on that is really where... Well, yeah, the, the autofocus speed is unusable, pretty and much. That's, and, even, and, and in the Unless in for the sports, a still subject, but if you have your subject still and you can't pull manual focus, you shouldn't have a red or any camera. Yeah, but if you go look at a oh, football yeah. game or something, you're going to be seeing people on Nikons and Canons. Not, right. And they're going to have fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 glass. But... Here's my point. If I take this and I'm pulling focus, I'll get a lot out of focus, but I'll have so many frames in when I'm in. Correct. You know what I mean? So what I, I want to know really, is basically the resolution more, difference. For resolution... And obviously this is a lot more ergonomical to go show up with this than to be like, hey guys, I'm shooting this for personal use. I think I really swear. just... Um, <laughs> I think really just the cost and the focus speed is the only diff downside about the reds when it comes to... That granted, so you'd have to manual focus. So, the, so it's not a big difference in overall image quality. What you're saying, like well, you're megapixels another, for you're, megapixels. You're getting we're going eight megapixels. You're here. going. You get. You go from what fifty, about fifty-seven. Hang on, I have the specs pulled up right here. Fifty-one twenty um, for your width, um, and then you have twenty-seven hundred for vertical kind of resolution. Right. Where if you go to the Canon. You go to 5400, so you get another 300 pixels in width, and then another almost over 1,000, almost 1,000 megapixels in just the bottom. So you get a whole lot more real estate. Um, right. Granted, both of them are still crop factors, so you don't have but to worry is, about that. But this is Super 35, that's APS-C. Oh. Yeah. But they're still somewhat crop factor yeah. sensors and stuff. But really, it's just cost. And this and has a 1.3 crop mm -hmm. at 5k at 5k full frame i'm not going to go through the entire <laughs> spec list of <laughs> look it up it's it, it's on reddigitalcinema.com um we have it printed out and hanging out by our lenses but yeah the, the there's a thousand different modes of what you want to shoot in and the crop factor is always changing so yeah but at I full mean, frame 5k you get 1.3 crop as opposed to 1.6 so you actually get a wider shot you get this but you lose you lose detail so, a little resolution. bit of detail so but if you're in a studio environment though let's go from there because i have seen okay. a few studio 
environments where people have shot on reds and stuff and that's even where i that was my very first experience on a red was in a studio environment uh for some modeling and stuff like that they were on reds um the other photographer also had a Hasselblad which is a whole another side of things um but it was pretty much all shot on the reds and you had a guy pulling the focus and modeling doing their own little thing and everything came out just fine i've seen shots from vogue and stuff like that that were all yeah. shot on red so in a studio environment if you had a budget or if you didn't have a budget so i think really the big would... thing is ergonomics and price ergonomics price and really if you're doing sports stuff still the canon or nikon it would be no matter if if i had a six i'd say bring budget, both if you have them though if I had a six figure budget, I'm not gonna get a red. Because you could um, do some, photos. you could do some wild things with this, like while you're getting video at such high frame rates. Yeah. As opposed to the ten frames per second here, and you can do ninety six here in full frame five K. Mm hmm. Um, that's why it costs so much, though. Yeah. So I mean, really, for me personally, I wouldn't, need, I wouldn't buy a red for photography. But that's... but if we took a photo, okay, say say we're at. Uh, I will say though. BMX session or something. You take a photo in, in one of your burst rates with this, and we just pull out one photo from it, and I pull out one photo from this. If they're both well shot, color corrected evenly, uh, would you be able to tell the difference? Besides the fact that Nikons just have a distinct look, and so does the red. Would you be able to tell quality-wise any difference? If you're pixel peeping, probably yes, but beyond that, no. Okay. So, but then again, you're also... That, and that's on a 4K monitor and pixel peeping. But then that also comes to the point where I probably... <laughs> I guess we could also talk about and put in... People do video and photography like myself. I, I do both. So, mm -hmm. um, instead of having... Like, now we both have three cameras to do one little thing where that red can do pretty much a mix of all if we just spend the extra few minutes here and there. Right, and extra money. Yes. So, so is that how we want to sum up, I guess, this part of it and move on to video, is if we had to pick one of these... That could do... that For stills and video, we would, go would with obviously red. go with the Red Epic because it's so superior. It's a phenomenal all in, around. In video... And, and they also you can do stills and it, nobody's going to complain. And Red also puts out that they can use it as a still camera. They do yeah. say whatever it's the DCM, yeah, right here's the, you can whatever it is. Stills and yeah. Motion, right? So you can you can Red says that. And when it comes to Canon, you have granted. I think Samsung did something kind of like the GH4 and GH3 where. They, granted, they said that it's for photography, um, but you think that it, after playing around, I well, think that it's... Well, they said it's for both, and yeah. after playing around, which I'm what, thinking, we're going to transition into the video side yeah. here, is they seem to have focused, on or at video. least what they, pr I'll say this instead of focused, I'll say what they promised on video, they delivered on. Yes. And actually delivered beyond my expectations for video. Mm -hmm. Not dynamic range, though. But that's, an, but that's yeah. a separate issue, and I need to do some tests, and that'll be another test that I do um, between... Okay, because now we're going to talk about video. Well, we were still... Um, oh, you want to finish up on... Yeah, yeah finish up on but photos. when it comes to Canon, you just think of a photography camera. I mean, even though they have, right. like... And if we were going to take this over the other... It's like, yeah, okay, well, you're taking the $30,000 camera over the 3000 So it's, it's kind of a mute yeah. point. You know. But if you, if you just if I only had one camera, I'd probably go with the red. But only drawback about the red is then you have to pull focus. Where yes. I go and take out the Canon, I have two lenses. I have my seventy to two hundred. I have my twenty four to seventy, and that's those are my three items that I need, and I'm set for the entire day. Right. Um, where I'm now we do to, have the one thing I want to point out that I like about the red for shooting stills is that um, I like pulling focus, so I, mm -hmm. don't, I don't mind that part at all. And yes, I'll get less in focus than the, maybe less in focus, I don't know, that's, we'll see. But um, uh, what I do get in focus, will I think will be worth it. 
Mm-hmm. Yes. And uh, what was that? What was I going to say about that? Otherwise, um, oh, okay, the crop factors. So if I'm going now, we're talking about photos. So I would be dropping in quality if I go say down to 4K full frame, but a uh, 4K photo not terrible. Mm-mm. No one's complaining. Okay, and then I can, you know, I can use the different uh, modes in between, and there's about four on each, you know, 5K, 4K, 3K. I can use them to manipulate the crop factors on my lenses. Yeah. So I could take one lens, and it's going to be way more versatile on this than it would be on that. Because that's a set crop factor. This one, I can bring this. I'll bring my little chart with me. You know, I want it to be this and long. And you fluctuate between 5 and 4K, and yeah, you're pretty much... Right. You have 20 million different lenses on just yeah, a couple of lenses. Yeah, because 4K is 1.8 at full frame, but if you go to widescreen or HD, it becomes even more, and mm-hmm. you can basically choose the mil- you know, the effective whatever. So, I guess let's transition into the video side of things. Okay, um, so I guess for video... I'll start with a Canon because the Canon. I'll start with much this, and um, they did put it in 1080 60. Finally, AIPB a- about um, like five years <laughs> late. Um, but this is gonna come out now for video because these both shoot 4K. Although this one does 5K as well. Oh, hang on, I wanted to just this one does I 1080. Laugh, I wanted to laugh at the 1080 thing first. Okay. Um, Go for it. So I'm all for laughing. I let's see, 60p finally for 1080. Um, yay! Which this has also. Yes. For 1080. Um, I think what are and this Sony has NEX for are Sony NEX uh, five ends. Um, those have 60p and um yeah. a 1080. Uh, let's see, Canon. Why didn't you throw in the AI? Um, or oh, all I? I? Yeah. Um, I was kind of a little disappointed. I got all excited, looked at it, and yeah, it's not. Um, it's not. It's not XAVC. It's no. not H two six five. Canon. This was, is H two six five. Yeah, and Canon was all ecstatic, boasting about it. Um, yet, if I got if I threw that into post or something, I can't really color correct it. Um, so. I'm pretty much just shooting. I can't. It from, it's just a very limited. Di- you can color correct it, but you better get damn close in camera. Yeah, if, if you mess up just if, a little bit, you're you're yeah, screwed. If you so, overexpose, those highlights are gone. Honestly, if you crush the I, blacks, that's gone. Same with the Samsung. Yeah. So, I but you do have more flexibility. I don't mean to keep cutting you off, but you do have more flexibility with the video settings as far as you know. Canon can go up and down for either way. This actually has an RGB that goes. In, in percentage mm-hmm. from all the way from zero to two, but you can put it at 10%, 8%, 20%, 100%, 150%, and yep. independently. And then it also has sharpness down to nine. There's a oh, lot yeah. more. It goes you so have, flat. I don't know why Canon hasn't actually, I mean, they have the C300, 100, 500, yeah. and stuff like that. But, um, I'm, I think I'm they're kind of, selling. I'm depressed. I'm depressed. I think they're with, selling a photo camera that can do video, and they're selling. Maybe they didn't know what they were selling, but I think they're selling a video camera that can a, do photos. Yeah, definitely. Just so like I, I would was, say, this does 1080. Meh. Well, this takes pictures. Yeah, it kind of can focus sometimes. It's kind of all, so meh. That's my equal. Yeah, I was I was disappointed with the Canon. I will say that when it comes to videos. And so. I did shoot 1080-60 on that versus the H.265 1080-60 on here. Um, this looks better than anything I've ever shot at 1080-60. I'm, the H.265. I'm, I'm, I'm rivaling with the FS100. I, I've always loved the FS100. But it's ABC HD at 28 megabits a second. Yeah. But if you use still... the slow and quick mode, it stays 28. Yeah. If you shoot continuously, then it, it will cut it to fourteen. To, yeah. Fourteen. But I've never I've never had bits. I've never had any issues with FS one hundred. Um No. But it has a distinct look and yeah. this I thought was gonna have that same kind of meh ten eighty sixty look. It was, uh, it, it, was did not. Beautiful. it was yeah. It, it had it, it, it had some depth to shots that I didn't even like. It was Thanksgiving. Yeah. I was in horrible low light, and uh, yeah, just 
uh, the that's something we didn't talk about, and we will about um, the the megabits per second that are coming out of this. Yeah, because this basically shoots. Well, we're talking about 1080, 60 right now. I don't know the megabits per I second for that, but when it's, we did the, it's a lot higher because it's. Yeah. When it, we did, it, it looks frame. crazy good. It looks better than anything I've ever seen in 1080, 60. Yeah. I'll say that. When I was looking, when we looked at, um, we did. It looks better than this in 1080, 60 because. Yeah. This is well, it's the crop factor so insane and it gets noisy and it's, this is windowed down mm -hmm. where this, um, yeah, it just comes out really. Really nice, and you don't. You see a lot less, uh, not natural motion blur, but you see a lot. Like, I don't know. I guess I could. I feel like I can see the bit rate. I, I was. It's I was like very, very crazy. pleased with the um, Samsung on pretty much video. Um, I have. I have a feeling that they kind of took the same route with like the GH4 or something. Yeah. And they focused on the video side of things. Um, where Canon, honestly, if I had to buy either a Mark One or a Mark Two version of a 7D, I'd probably go with the first version, like a Mark One, because the extra features, like the video, is Canon's downside, which I yeah. think Canon just up ultimately, ultimately <coughs> failed with the video, yet they were all boasting about, oh, we got 1080 frame, or, yeah, 1080 60p. Yeah, no, you guys didn't. Well, um, here's here's what's annoying, and here's what I ended up doing, is I, I bought this, like I said, to just keep till I get this, because I kept pushing it back a month, a month, a month, and I was getting depressed. I need a new camera. I need toys. Mm -hmm. So I got this just to tide me over. Now what's happening with after these tests is I am keeping this for photos and I'm absolutely keeping this for videos. Yeah. And I'll never shoot a video on this and I will probably never shoot a photo on this. Probably. Probably. <laughs> I mean, I it, it's still, I could use it like for fun, little family events, stuff, but it's still, uh, it, it, if I'm going, it's, if we're it's going ugly, to a I'll, I'll take that if we're, if we're going to a client's If I go place. somewhere and we're shooting video for sure and maybe some stills, I would take this and use it for stills also. Mm -hmm. If I know I'm only taking pictures, I'm taking this. Hands yeah. down. So you go with the AIPB mode or whatever they, Canon calls it. So you have a really low bit rate on this. Yeah, you have... So let's talk about did, the H.265. Yeah, so we did, we did 4K with the red. We did 4K with the NX1. Mm -hmm. um, we looked at the bit rate. Um, it is supposed of, to be equal to... In H.264, so people can understand the quality. I, this this it's, doesn't. You have to see it really. Yeah. And and we'll, and we'll, we'll, we'll be adding. We're some, gonna show that. So. Yeah. Um, they're basically saying at H H.264 at a thousand megabytes per second is the quality of the H.265, and it's fifty takes up fifty percent of the space. Kind of after looking at everything, you're when it comes to bitrate, um, H.265 says it's around 72 to 73 megabits a second. So that already right there is phenomenal. I'm, well, but it says that it's shooting actually double that. But yeah, it, H.265 but the H265 texting, yeah. brings it down to how much it... I don't know how you want to say I that, how it loads into the camera or how fast it... whatever... It, it's shooting at a higher quality than it, it, it does a really nice, I guess it's, I don't know what it's doing, debayering? I have no idea. Yeah, um, but, but I was I was pretty impressed that already automatically it was doing 20 megabits a second faster or more just for the raw video and stuff like that. Um, so... Yeah. And also, it records them straight to regular old SD cards. Literally, I pulled one out from Florida, which was oh, man, 2011, so, and just stuck it in there. I have no idea if it's even class 10, and it recorded 4K fine. Yeah. No so, I mean, really, if you were to convert it to, like, H.264, you're probably getting about 150-ish megabits a second. Um so that's kind of what H.265 came 
is doing it's their high efficiency kind of codec i will say that it's spot on um i'm yeah. very 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 pleased with how samsung I, i'm annoyed that the editing programs don't have that in place by now it is and we have to transcode that we should have mentioned that you have to transcode yeah. it to prores or whatever you want anything that you're editing system could take but uh right now as we speak adobe will not pull in straight h265 final cut x i'm not going to speak for because I, I don't use or approve so i like my max yeah. but i don't use final cut on my max i don't know if it works maybe it does happy special talent it's going to convert it to prores anyway so yeah We'll post a little box saying it works or it doesn't. I'll throw it on really fast just yeah. for the heck of it. But um, Okay, but the one thing I wanted to say about this, and I'm shooting on that same insanely flat setting. Mm -hmm. Now, I did bring the color up a little bit. I brought it back from negative 7 to negative 5. Yeah. Just so I could see some damn color. You know, like there was... <laughs> you can make that thing go very, very flat, which is kind yes, of... insanely You flat. can almost make it monochrome flat. Type deal but the, but the color's there. Like, if you looked at this can, you'd see a little bit of green, but yeah. barely. A little green, a little blue, a little red. And yeah, that's... but, like, skin tones will appear black and white. Yeah. But it's recording the color, so that's what's important. Okay, so this, I and you can play them right now on a Windows computer, at least. I haven't tried it on a Mac. You can do it on a Mac just fine. Okay, also. and you can play, you can play the H.265 files right away. No code, nothing needed. And on my Macs, I do use VLC though. Yes, um, so do I. And then my PCs were using. But I actually, use, it plays on Windows Media Player. Well, but we also so, we threw Media Windows Media Player Classic and um, kind of K-Lite Codex Pack on all my computers. So yeah, whenever we build up, whenever I build up a computer, so yeah. that already has any and every codec known to man. So but it, it's very easy if not, if you don't have the codec to get it you know, to thing. be able to play it. Technically, we do not know because as soon as I build up your computer, I throw that code at pack. That's part of the install. Okay, well, for us, it works. I'm going to assume it works for other people, hopefully. If not, we'll show you our clips. So. Yeah, we'll throw in yeah. K-Lite codecs and stuff like that, and we'll have a link but to But th this is the big that. thing that I wanted to say about this camera. This one... Yeah, we can. This should be embarrassed. Yeah, I'm for just video. Move this. We're talking about video. I'm just gonna move let's it like that. Let's just take it out of the equation. Let's just <laughs> let's set that on the ground for now. Yeah, do whatever you want with that. All right. So, I first looked at some test shots with this, and even with that flat setting, I played it, and it looks like I shot it on the Red Epic, <laughs> and did a really crazy good color grade and it is just insanely sharp i like it, it i like it, it just looks like, like the final result from this i'm gonna say it's kind Minus, of like gh4ish okay it's gh4ish it me. is it is it's it's very sh like super sharp i wish it were softer this is mega sharp or i mean you can make it mega sharp but it starts off filmix very soft how it should be for video, mm -hmm. or at least for how I like, you know, if you like the film look, yeah. Um, but that's what I want to test a little more about to see how close I can get, how soft I can get it. Yeah. And now I did have the sharpness and everything already down, but I'm going to go through it again and just tweak some things and just focus on video now because I was focused a lot on trying to make it a decent photo camera and that just wasn't happening. So. I'm going to go through again and focus, you know, just on video, but what's coming out of this right now is looks like it was shot on a red and color graded by a pro and that's just the flat image out of there which doesn't yeah. look flat though. I'm going to put a pause for 1 second. Yeah. I want to check batteries. Okay. So, let me check batteries. Checking batteries. Still got an hour left on that, and <coughs> we're good on the Sony. Okay. Okay. So, all right, we're back. Just want to double check batteries and stuff like that. Um, yeah, overall, I'm just gonna straight up say the Sony or the Samsung. Sorry. Um, 
you guys did phenomenal on the video. Granted, only one thing that I do not like about the kind of photos on that is um, contrast and um, the lack of dynamic range. Lack, yeah. It seems like when you go to video on this, it's got about five stops. Yeah. So uh, may, maybe eight. I, don't I know. guess I guess eight. We're yeah. we're gonna show a couple of pre um, preview clips on what we shot on the red, what we shot on the um, Sony or the Samsung. Now that's that's internal though. Now this does have an HDMI out clean feed. Yep. At, Which is good. I believe is it ten bit four two? No, it's eight bit four two zero. But it's a clean feed and it's H dot two six five. And the H.265 versus anything else that existed, you just can't compare it. Because right when I hear 8-bit 420, I'm like, uh, I think of ABC HD. This is incredibly different, incredibly detailed. Mm -hmm. and, and it's crazy because I said it's so flat. And I need to check if there's like separate... I mean, there, I've been all through the menu. I don't see separate video settings for the the color, you know, the profile mode on there. But when I'd play it back, it looks like it's already gone through some color grade. Yeah. Like it went from log to LUT. Um, and I, I don't like that because mm -hmm. it's graded for me. And I, I, I kind of, the reason I'm keeping this now is to be a 4K B cam to the Red Epic here. But if I can't match them up and make this a little softer, and I, I had the saturation all the way down, but then yeah. you watch the clip, it's fully saturated, kind of, it's it, fully sharp. Out of it's the insane. camera, I'm gonna say it kind of gave the feeling of like a um, Saving Private Ryan kind of look out of the yeah. camera. Um, we had everything at 320 ISO, but a lot sharper. Yes, a way lot sharper, sharper. But it just had that kind of the blacks crushed. Um, and yes, stuff. I mean, blacks were gone. So, like, for instance, we'll show a clip of um, just outside there's, there's our driveway. Tree. There's a tree, and we, we have a tree and the sky in the background. Yeah, and um, and also like a. Truck by the way, and... don't look at the metering on that thing. No, because uh, I don't know what it's thinking. Yeah, but uh, go go with your eyes. Use a light meter. I wouldn't use the meter on that because it's insane. Um, it's just not accurate at all. It's neither are cannons really, but it's even less than cannon. Way, way, way off. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, yeah, we have clean four two two HDMI. Um, okay, that's four K. So um, that was that. So, it's also saying. Yep. Um, for the codec space, which um, I will contest that it is true. Um, it's saying 1% of the video file. I'm not going to say it's 1%. Um, when, of the file size. Yeah, so when we went from a 400, or I think it went down from a, it was about 10% smaller than um, ProGress 422. I'm going, reconverting it from the H.265 yeah. to the um, ProGress just so we could throw it into... Um, our editing programs, which is Premiere, um, did use a program that's out right now. Um, it is kind of fairly expensive, about eight hundred dollars, um, and it converts pretty much H.265 to ProRes, and it was about it jumped up pretty big. I mean, four hundred megabyte file oh, yeah. went up to four gigs. So well, it's gonna um, go back to big after you shoot it, but yeah, at least you can shoot it and fit it on a card, and it's not like the Blackmagic Cinema camera where you need. 50, 64 gig cards to get a good 15 minutes or something. It's, so. it's not like that, but you do see it going pretty quick. It mm -hmm. shows how many, you know, your shutter count left. It takes significant chunks out, but it's not bad at no. all. You don't need 13 cards. I, I mean... You could probably do an entire, entire day, day shoot, shoot maybe on, on three, 364s. Or just one, Two? I, I think probably just a single 64 well, the, gig. The max or, is 64 gigs yeah. for the SD card, we should mention. I have 128, I can't use it on this. Yeah, so, um, which is weird, I don't know why Samsung did yeah, that. Yeah, that was, that was kind of a bummer, because I, I, was, I was about to buy, the way we found that out, I was about to buy a bunch of uh, 128s for like a Black Friday sale, and um, 
he looked at the specs on one of the things and it said up to 64 gigs. And I was like, okay, I gotta return those quick. But I also, I'm one of those people that do not recommend doing huge cards anyways, just because you go shoot an entire day and you lose a 128 gig card. Um, I've never, I've never lost footage ever from an SD yeah. card. I'm gonna knock on wood for <laughs> so I'm, that. That's why I'm not afraid to use the bigger cards. I think technology is getting better, and it's getting better. I don't handle them like an idiot, and I offload as soon as I'm done shooting. I come yeah. home and offload. So I'll go a little bigger, but I'm limited to 64s now. Luckily, I still have about 90 million left from the Blackmagic Pocket Camera. Yeah, I, nah, I don't even want to talk about that thing. <laughs> Me neither, yeah. So, I also have um, tons of Nikon batteries if anyone needs any. Um, but anyways, back to this. So Samsung did a phenomenal job with their video side. Yes, um, uh, it does look so crisp though, and which is weird to me because the setting is down, sharpness all the way. To yeah, so not off, but negative nine. Yeah, we kept all the, we kept the lenses at f four. Um, but then it's so sharp when I shoot on it, it looks like I'm shooting at f eight at yeah. f four. So that was I, that I don't was get what's pretty... going on, and I also don't get I have it on manual focus and it's going into autofocus when I hit the video, which it's I actually like the placement of this button right here. Yes. Um, I have never hit it by accident, and when I try to purposely hit it, you actually have to. Push I have to look and, and you actually have to and press, press it. it. So yes. Samsung did because I thought it was going to be right here or like on the thumb, like some of the N NX yeah. one. Yeah, and then ones. sometimes my kind of middle of the finger will hit yeah. it. Yeah, it's it's hard to hit, and when you hit it, you can um, it's it's pretty distinct, and yeah. you can set um any button you want, but you can set this to uh pre buffer the uh, video and it will start, it will get itself ready for video mode and you can see the, the different, you know, it goes down to DCI at 24 mm -hmm. because I'm shooting at true 4K. And then, um, yeah, I have to look more into that. I'm not sure what that pre-buffer does exactly because when I press this, it just starts recording right away and I don't see the need for the pre-buffer, but maybe, I don't know if it does but like a three second record or something. I didn't hear anything about that though. Because yeah. all that they've been talking about their photo specs. Yeah. So, but it's got some pre-buffer. It's got to do something. You can assign it to a dial, unless it's just to kind of switch to movie mode. Because there's no way to do that other than hitting record and then it just goes. Yeah. So. And I will say that's also another. That's I guess a downside of it. Um, where I do like the cannons. Where you switch. Where you have and levels. you can see. Yeah. So you know you're in photo mode. You're in video mode. Um, and then it also changes your settings. So when yeah. you go into your video mode on a Canon, you, you, you're not changing your photo settings. You're just changing the video right. Side. And on, on this, you're using it's the all same. At once. You can and you can set custom settings one, two, three, blah blah, which is great. But if if you're not thinking about it, it's it's something extra you have to think about. That's yeah. All. And that was one thing. That's all it is. I, I did all the kind of uh, video side of things for both the cameras and. Um, you came back and you're like, hey, did you change any of the settings? I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> so yeah. that was kind of one thing that after yeah, I Yeah, because I, I looked at these clips and they were like, I was like, oh, it's graded. Yeah. But I, it was obviously not. I was looking at it straight off the card. And I was like, so, what happened? Because I set this so flat and it came out like, rec, I don't know, Rec 709 process or something. Yeah. Or just, but it just it does look phenomenal, which is a, a good thing, I guess. If you do not know how to make videos look good, mm -hmm. take videos with this, and it just looks great. But, but then you also have the GH4 though already that's kind of tried and true and perfected over the last. But couple this is of years. a bigger sensor and it's cheaper. It's yeah, so. Now, I'm, so I maybe keep I'm keeping this I think to leave on my Ronin, and since the body is so cheap, it's only fifteen hundred. I'll probably buy a second body at some point, uh, so I can have one always on the Ronin, um, or one just and one know. like hanging out on a slider somewhere, whatever. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I'm still mainly going to use my Epic on the Ronin because the dynamic range is just not there. If if this were a chart on the height here, this is how much dynamic range this has, 
and this is down here. Yeah. So I need to do further tests to see if I can even cut these two together. So now if I can't cut these two together because this is so sharp on flat and so colored, I don't know how malleable it is to edit yet because I haven't got, we, we transcoded some clips, but I haven't got to edit them yet. Um, so I want to take them into Resolve and, you know, see how flexible and how malleable the colors are. Um, but the thing is, is that it's so nice that even if I can't cut these together and use this as a B cam, I'll probably just keep it as a little toy for fun. Yeah. You know, because you could shoot a whole demo reel on it. It'd be I say if great. Samsung wants to get into the video side of things, that they have a good platform to go off of yes. with this camera. And also, they have audio meters right yeah. away. So you don't some... have to wait 10 years like Blackmagic. <laughs> Sorry, Blackmagic. Um, we have had your cameras. Yeah, I've, I've owned every one of your cameras. I don't like them. Um... But yeah, audio meters pop up right away. They actually, it takes really good in-camera sound. Not that I ever think in-camera sound is good or professional or anything like that. Yeah, we, but, were, ta we were talking but we about... Were, we were using it just for reference while we were shooting on these two to say the settings so we'd, you know, be able to put the, the text up in the video. Yeah. And I was like, wow, I have it on manual and I have it like to four or three out of five, or I mean out of ten. Um, and it, it got really clear audio and mm -hmm. it was windy out i don't have wind cut on uh i didn't hear any wind i just heard our voices and i was like "Ooh, damn we sound pretty good yeah so i mean it's not it, it, wow. it's not like using a boom mic uh, okay don't think you can do that i'm just saying it's it's a nice little feature to have in camera that's pretty pretty good it's a, a couple of steps above anything i've ever used for in camera audio and it's always on, it's, it's default, unlike the red where I have to put a mic on. And there are some times when I wish I had a, you know, a stupid on-camera mic on. Just to get, you know, I don't know, something happens behind the scenes, funny stuff happens, and you realize you don't have audio because you didn't plug it in, this is already good to go. So if I can't match them, I, I guess I'm, it really doesn't justify in my budget but I'd like to keep it as a camera, but then anything I'd shoot with it, if I can't mix these two, it's gonna have to be a completely separate thing. Yeah, and then that's probably where I'd probably go with a Panasonic. But I don't, I don't like the GH4, I don't like the GH3 or the GH2, I think they're way too toyish, I think this is built, and I'm just not, this is like a Canon to me, yeah. as far as ergonomics. The GH4 was not like that. And maybe Canon might, Hopefully, if Canon ever sees this, maybe throw in 4K on your guys' next I camera. I highly doubt. Dude, out. we just got 1080, 60. <laughs> You're asking for 4K? Like it's gonna be another 15 years. You're what are you crazy? We just got 1080, 60. That is the newest technology for hey, Canon. Hey, I am as crazy because I like cats over dogs. So well, that's I'm also already, crazy. I'm already crazy. So that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but this has 1080 60 right off the bat first camera you know first flagship camera from Samsung yeah. obviously uh, but what are we really I mean phones have 240 on them now really yeah. Canon 1080 60 <laughs> like, yeah. I mean let's see well, let's you have your S5 you have the Note 3 you have the one plus one yeah. Um, Granted, those aren't real cameras or professional cameras. Or, one plus one has. Well, they're real, but one plus one has a phenomenal uh, sensor on it. It's good. Sony but has their. I've, I've noticed the sharpness and everything that you're seeing out of the newest Samsung smartphones. It translates into their video on yeah. here. Like I've seen, I don't know what it was. It's not the S fours. Whatever was after that it might have been the S four. I have no idea. My friend had one, or actually one of our coworkers, our company, had um, a new Samsung phone, something, I don't know. S5. It was big, and it took really nice pictures, and he was so impressed with the pictures, and depth of field, and clarity, and it, when I saw the video on this, it looked like that. 
but yeah. it's 4K video. And that's why I would keep this kind of, I say a toy, but it's really just because it's non-essential to what I, I guess do. If, if we need portability and stuff. Right, the same, portability, this. but if I can't cut it with this, I'm not using it with this, but I would keep it because I'll go shoot my little family videos and crap, and I can shoot them for 1500 bucks. I, and I have an adapter. I use all my Canon or Nikon lenses, and I could use them. You know, I have 4K, so it's going to last uh, the you know the test of time longer. Yeah. 1080, yeah, it's uh, still all 1080 on broadcast and everything, but you know you're good for a while, especially with, like, family memories and stuff. Mm -hmm. You, you want to be shooting ahead of the time so that when you go watch it 20 years later, it's not like 260p or whatever, yeah. you know? Yeah, and finally 4K is beyond the kind of thing like standard def with 1080 where everyone initially when 1080 came out, they were dropping it down, downscaling it down yes. to standard def and it was giving it phenomenal quality and stuff You can like also that. crop around if you're not so good in production, you can yeah. fix a lot in post. I wouldn't recommend shooting that way ever, but there's people that do that. You did that a couple I've years done, ago. I've done that on a couple <laughs> you of my did videos that a couple where years ago. it was like you used to I'm, rely on raw. But Oh yeah, I, I, I love it. But, but I yeah, I wouldn't recommend that, but it can do that. So I guess I should mention it cuz I mean, there are people out there that can't that would they have money. They buy the newest cameras. They don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. It's usually like soccer moms and dads. But they can go shoot a video on this on 4K, and if they put it on a tripod, it's going to be pretty nice. Yeah, granted it's, then... It's pretty close to But then the there, there's better cameras that can do everything. I mean, for photos and video-wide right. also. That is the big downfall, is that photos, I want to smash this thing. Yeah. And... I've been excited for this for six months. I trust me, like he wanted this camera to fail, basically. I, I he, not that he wanted it to fail, but he's like, it's gonna fail. It's gonna fail. I didn't, gonna I didn't get my. You had your hopes. I up. had my hopes I, up so I, high for this camera for photos, especially for photos. Yeah, I was and like, just, I don't know. I've seen so much. I, I knew the video was gonna be. I expected it to be about the same quality as like everything else, but like with the efficiency and, and space and saving yeah. and the portability of being able to record right here onto an SD card. I saw the video side of things fine. The photos, though, it just it looked too good to be true. It, so that's kind of it how did, I... It did, but I believe I, in miracles, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, but I got let down. It, yeah. I will say for backside illuminated <laughs> kind of sensor, 4K um, noise. I guess we we never really talked about noise. Noise, noise in the video. Noise in the video came out phenomenal. Yeah, will, it's way better than the photos. I will say that's what's crazy. I will say it's near the like Sony A7S and stuff like that. Or yeah, it's it's, it's pretty much whatever you shot at. It, the noise stayed the same. Yeah, that's okay. That was kind of, also kind of a caveat. Because if we shot at like 100 or 160 in video, we were seeing the same amount of noise that we saw at 1600 and 3200. It wasn't a ton, but it's there. So if you want that like super clean video, like I only use ISO 320 on this, no matter what. Because that's what I expose for. Argue with me, I don't care. That's how I shoot. Um, look at my videos and tell me if they're grainy. They're not. So... Um, but light, but this one, we control the light, not light controls us. So right, that's... exactly. So I'm fine with 320 on this, and people are like, oh, the red sucks in low light. Um, that's why I have lights. and I've shot night sessions for skateboarding on a red. Exactly. Red it's not as bad as it's made out to be. Um, I have the money. If I wanted a dragon sensor, I'd buy it for those two extra stops in the shadows and the one in the highlights. I wouldn't buy it for the 6K because I don't need that right now. Um, I, I I would buy a Dragon sensor, but I don't need it. I, I was like, I'll get the MX first, and I'm I'm completely happy with it. I've mm -hmm. never had a time where like, oh man, this sucks. It beats out the uh, Blackmagic production 4K camera by about two to three full stops, and I noticed that on a short film <clears throat> that I was working on, we actually had to blast so much fill into the room that it turned our night scene that was lit from the outside exterior with moonlight into yeah. a day scene 
And that bugged me because I was like, well, my camera can do it. Um, and everyone trashes this for low light performance. The Black Magic was way under, way under. Mm -hmm. So back to this. Um, I will see if I can, ma I will be super happy if I can match these two cameras and cut interchangeably because I would use. And I guess over time we can also. I, I, I would use this. In the description, we'll over yeah, time we'll, once we'll we put up updates and stuff. Yeah. But I would, um, I would use this mainly as a B cam for like I could have it ready on the Ronin and balance. I could have another body ready on a slider, ready to go, and that way I can just have this one on the tripod. Otherwise, it's a lot of you know I have to change out the base plate to actually it's already there, right? No, no, it's no not. we don't have that. Okay, so this is this will fit on all my tripods and everything, but it will not. Uh, I need to put on the airy dovetail to go onto the red epic. Then I got to, or, sorry, the, <laughs> Ronin. To put the epic on the Ronin, and then I'd have to rebalance it if I'm using this. But even with it set, um, it's kind of a pain to use. I mean, it's heavy. It's heavy. Mm -hmm. It's a huge pain to use on there. And I have back support things. That's cool, but the way it goes all to your back, and you'll fall over eventually. Um, so this would be nice to have if I can completely mesh these, which but I would I would never use this for a scene that has like a window in it and someone sitting inside. This yeah. is never gonna match the dynamic range of this, ever ever ever. I think ever. when we're doing documentaries or something, or we just yeah, need this a would, B this cam. Would be great. Yeah, we don't want to risk dropping a thirty thousand dollars setup. Right. The Samsung is phenomenal. I will. Yeah, like we just shot a paintball commercial and we, we got rid of one clip because we didn't have this yet. And this is what I plan to use yep. for it. Uh, we were going to do a first person view. It was, it was a paintball commercial. Um, a first person view kind of with a high shutter speed, kind of like, uh, you know, where you'd see the gun. Just like a video game, just like Call of Duty. That's what I wanted to shoot. Um, and we didn't feel comfortable doing it with this because there was a lot of leaves and we were going to hold it by the top handle. We wouldn't really see framing. It just, we didn't want to go, no one wanted to slide and take a dive behind this thing in leaves and hold up a red epic. Like, that's too much money in your hands. And the GoPro. I'd rather yeah. trash, yeah, I didn't want to go GoPro because... No. Everyone does that. Yeah, I, I mean, I use that for one aerial shot in the with it on a drone in the commercial, and eh, I only did that because the client likes it. But that's where I wanted this. And this video was we could I run swear with this. This video was only for fun. It's not a real commercial. It's just to play around. Well, it, it's a real commercial. It's just yeah, it was for fun. It's for a friend. Yeah. Um, we didn't exactly have willing participants. We didn't hire actors. We didn't have. And it's well, illegal we, to we, have drones. It. It's illegal to use drones for commercial use at the second. Why are you saying that? Because it is. Okay, well, you don't have to admit that in a video to everybody. No, but we it's just a fun little commercial. We got bored We're going to cut this part out because my clients will see that and know that. They don't know that right now. I tell them that as I'm shooting with the drone. We'll just leave that part out. Anyway, so getting back to this... Um, I'm really hoping that it will mesh with that. If not, it will effectively become my favorite toy camera. Mm -hmm. And I could, I might still use it for some demo reel shots. You just have to avoid anything where too you need, contrasty. yeah, too contrasty where you need dynamic range, and that's where I always have this. I mean, for. some of the video. I mean, we couldn't. I couldn't even differentiate tires and the wheel well. And it's like, to yeah, me, that's... Because once, once anything was, like, in the shadows, it was pure black. Pure yeah. black, crushed, gone. And that's completely flat. Now, I want to try out some other settings, but I, I went through the menu. We could go through the menu here and tell you... Actually, I might as well tell you what I shot on. Okay, so um, you go in the picture wizard here. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll show you this. The color, this is where you can change it... Um, it's RGB and you can change them independently. I just left that set at zero. Um, maybe maybe I should drag them down to 10% each. I don't think they're going to be able to see. That is insanely flat. Oh, I switched. Hold on. Yeah. Okay, well. They're not going to be able to see the camera. They, they might. They might. They might. Okay, but that's there. Okay. 
So basically there's a, a red, green, and a blue slider, and I can move it in very small increments. I can move them all, I can make this crazy, insanely, almost monochrome flat. Yeah. I will say touchscreen on this thing is oh, yes. phenomenal. That's nice um, too, the touchscreen. Can, you can move your autofocus point with that. Um, you never hit it by accident. I've never no. hit it by accident. Even and how I hold my cameras, because I do kind of yeah. hold it funky. Um, I forget that it has trust screen, then I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so, so I had saturation at negative 7. Now, it goes to negative 10, which is monochrome. Negative 9 is the flattest color setting you can use. Yeah. And it goes up to plus 10. 10. So you'd think negative 7 would be pretty flat and not come out with the results the way it did. Mm -hmm. Now there's sharpness down to negative 10. I don't know if you can see that, but if not, it's at negative 10, it goes to plus 10. And it's still coming out really sharp, like I sharpened it. In in video. In, in post, yes. When it for, comes for to video. photos though, it looks true negative 10. Yes, it um, does. It looks very not sharp at all. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to look into that and see if maybe when I, Maybe maybe with the pre-buffer thing, when I go into that, maybe I need to look at my settings and it'll be they'll be set to like standard. I feel like there's something that like that going on here because look, contrast negative ten, hue, I just left it zero. But there's no way it could come out with that like fully like red epic looking graded look with those settings. So I think yeah. it's either ignoring those settings and hopefully I can change that and access them. And maybe I can do that through the pre-buffer when it goes into movie mode and then checking into my settings. Mm -hmm. I've only had this a few days, so I haven't got to try that yet. I was mainly, you know, um, mainly trying to get, am I keeping this one for video and stills? Am I keeping the 70? Because I bought it just to return. Um, but now I'm keeping it because it's... A, far superior photo camera yeah dynamic range was completely off um so i mean it was it was interesting yeah uh um, colors colors on this uh one thing and i think this is good um but it could require some more heavy grading for masking and everything with photos or video is it picks up now it has an option to turn on the the oled colors on and off but either way when you set your white balance, you can still pick up like corners of the same colored wall will be like a little more cyan than white. And there will be some where you see like a ton of magenta in a weird spot from from like, you know, a regular household lamp. And, and that makes sense and all, but it's so much more than I've ever seen in a traditional photo. Are you screwing up all my settings? No. Okay. Noise well, reduction was also completely off. I'm just going through. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I turned ones. off all the cameras. I've tried it with it on low, medium, high. I've tried it. It, not much of a difference. Um, to high, just you lose details. Low, you lose a little details. Yeah. Medium, you use in, lose in between. So what was I talking about? I, honestly, I wasn't even focused on you. Uh, okay. So um, that's just how much I about you thanks <laughs> um i was talking about something it was a good point oh i don't know what point you were talking about i will say this though um you only get 24p when you're shooting a full uh 4k yeah. not the uhd which is what everyone says is 4k ish right um 4k you... is true 4090 by 21 um 2160. Yeah. UHD you get that at 30p at 3840 by 2160, but you can't do UHD at 24 and you can't do true 4K at 30. I don't care cuz I shoot in 24 yeah. all the time. That's always my project time base. Um then you can do 1920 by 60 which looks I uh, try it before you knock it cuz it for 1080, looks, it's phenomenal. For 1080, and yeah, it, it, it will be like a 1080 to 60 you've never seen before because yeah. of the quality. Um, and it beats out like what this could do at 1080. It looks like, it looks like, uh, I'd say it looks like maybe 4K on this at 60 frames. Mm -hmm. 
it's like that good. <laughs> it's, yeah. And then I will say um, also smart range, so it corrects or corrects the loss of your brights and your highlights. Um, and it, yeah, there's an op option off. for dynamic. It's like they kind of. It looks like it's a dynamic range extender, um, but it's it's not. Uh, when you hover over it and you have the info on, it says it helps recover highlight details. So I figured that's just lowering highlights in camera. So I eventually I turned that off for all these tests. I had it on initially because I didn't have the uh, info thing on, and I thought it just expanded the dynamic range. But why why would it limit it in the first place? It's stupid. So, yeah. so that was a setting that is now just pointless, and that's only that's available when you're shooting raw. Um, there's one right under it that's only available in JPEG, but we're not talking about JPEG because that does all the fun, silly stuff. Mm, yeah. Oh, and we want to correct. You can the HDMI out, and this is you tell me. That is. Is that mic? Is that HDMI? Wow. Yes. It All is. right. So what is that? That's, that's micro. 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 Uh, class D or Type D? No. No. It's just I'm micro. thinking of coax cables that yes. I just bought. Okay. Micro HDMI out, and we said you can get 420 out. I was wrong. It, it does 8-bit 422. Clean output. So you have what the Gemini or uh, probably the Shogun? Yeah, or the, I don't know. I don't use external recorders because the thing for me was I want this camera to do what it can do in camera. Mm -hmm. I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah, I can make this camera awesome if I want to build it up to be a full rig. I don't want to do that. You see how small like my Red Epic setup is. I don't have my follow focus on right now, but it's. Very small. Where is it? Over there? Yeah, I took it off somewhere. Can you grab it over there? Because it's, it's very compact, That's even with my follow focus okay. setup. I have I have about three inch rods and the follow focus on, and I use the Rokinon um, art lenses. And it's 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 very Rokinon compact. Rokinon art lenses now, huh? Oh, Rokinon <laughs> art. No, Rokinon DS cine lenses. Sorry, they're all color matched. So that's what I use. I also have... Um, I use the, the, the World War II Zeiss glass, but I only use them for separate scenes. My main glass is the Rokinon, um, but then I have the whole Zeiss set, and then I have all of the 1977 uh, E-Series Nikon glass, uh, which I'll use randomly for different different looks and feels and stuff, but mainly I like the color-matched um, Rokinons, I like the price, and they perform... As well as Once. the top one, you know. Like and then a, again for me, a notch under. And then again for me, it's f two eight and stuff like that. That's I stop down and um, who's done it? Uh, I think Luke Newman did a test with the Canons, the Rokinon, <coughs> just cine lenses, and then uh, the what something else and the the CP twos. So yeah, CP twos and the Zeiss Otis, right? Well, no, he just, just the he did, I think it was Which just... Which are like $32,000. The CP2s, right? he did the Canon EF full range, um, and then the Rokinons, and when she stopped down, it's very, very similar, but that's how all glass is. Granted, when you had yeah. everything opened up, the Canons look way better than the Zeiss, but... But the Rokinons on DxO Mark, I believe, a lot of them are rated uh, at their full sharpness wide open yeah really, but you know it always say best DX, at it'll that's say dxo mark though and I, right I've, i don't we 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 stop going off that I, i'm i'm done with dxo i'm mark. done because it's it'll rate something and then go buy go buy the best crap from dxo mark or the best best gear and be the best thing ever yeah whatever no. we did that's what we did with the nikon d810 versus 5d mark three and we're like okay this is gonna smoke the 5d mark three Took identical pictures, could not tell the difference, and I can see, I mean, I can see lines refresh, refresh in clocks. They move like this to me. But I, I have trained eyes. We're not, we're not blind. Um, it's just the difference was so minute for 
such a large score difference. Mm -hmm. A full, what, 10, 11 points on DxO Mark overall? D8 10 is the highest ranked in there, and the yes. Mark 3 is, is like way like down. 10 below. It's, yeah. So. But the difference there was just not as monumental as DxO Mark makes it. And no. they said the 70 Mark 2 is just total crap. Yeah. Yeah, I'd and take, that's why I was. Yeah, making, I'd take the seventy Mark II. I, I over bought it kind of as Mark a joke. II. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have take, it over at your Mark III, uh, and that's I've even come to the conclusion that I take Where is that. Let's put that back. Oh, that's over here. So yeah, I would trade this camera for my Mark III, um, personally, and I did that. I got rid of the Mark III. Yeah. So, so, but that's not yours. No. You, keep, you act like it's yours, but it's mine. I'll still. I'll, I, I took. <laughs> <laughs> the NEX or yeah, the NEX five N over my Mark III also. Uh, so really, for photos, it's throw some lights on it and it's fine. It, I'm I'm that's impressed. interesting, and that's that's something. Okay, that's, that's I didn't want to let my secret out about that, the five N. That, that's a lot of people yeah. don't know. <laughs> so. I, I, I I seriously, that's why we get it for two hundred dollars. Yeah. I don't want to let my secret out. But we'll, all right, so we'll share a little secret. NEX Five N is a phenomenal camera. If you if you're a, uh, any kind of a decent operator, you can get some results on that. Considering it's a two hundred dollar camera, and we have a four hundred dollar lens on it. Yeah, four hundred dollar broken on six. I actually four. shot with like a kit lens on it, mm -hmm. snowboarding, and I. I, I smoked the FS seven hundred with it. Clarity, sharpness, focus, and I'm pulling manual the over built -in the built-in ND you know. and the high, the bigger f sensor on the FS seven hundred is kind of the drawback on and that the though. Frame rate, yeah, yeah, it loses dynamic grip. Blah 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 blah. Anyway, NX <laughs> NEX five N. If if you don't have the money for any of those, can't go buy that. Mm -hmm. Go buy that. Do the speed kit. booster. No, you could even do the kit lens. The kit. I wouldn't do 18, the kit lens. I'd do uh, the eighteen to two hundred is not a bad kit lens. No, it's so, not. It's not. I've shot a lot of photos on that that are in our portfolio. Actually. I mean, for and I shot it on the five yeah. N. For eight hundred bucks, you can get that and the eighteen to two hundred, and it's phenomenal stuff. But you can buy it with like one prime for a total of four hundred bucks because the NEX five N is like discontinued and it's for sale. Yeah. No one thinks anything of it. It has a really nice sensor, and that's something I noticed with these, talking about the noise, and that's why I'm saying noise has not improved that much. What I like about the NEX 5N is on the LCD, on these LCDs, the noise will kind of look uh, like it's not there to you all the time. You'll see it a little, but it's, it, it under-exaggerates how much noise is going to be in the final image. NEX 5N is it, it does not lie to you. Mm -hmm. It'll be like, oh my god, it's horribly ugly at 3200. You yeah. can't shoot like that. But you use it, it can go, I'd say, up to 800. And that thing, I don't know, it just has its own quality. I took it with a 514 Canon and the Speed Booster. Uh, we were shooting a recruitment video. Mm -hmm. um, the other day, just shooting some nightlife and stuff, and that that's the most fun camera to play with. This is off topic, but if you can't afford it, that's just to show you that uh, you don't need a Red Epic. It's not about how much it costs. It's, I mean, you can no, buy that $200 camera and shoot a feature film and tell everyone you shot it on the Epic, and they'll believe you, because if you do it right, it looks phenomenal. And I know professional photographers and cinematographers that will even tell you it's not about the camera, it's about oh, the it's, operator. Everyone knows it's about the and operator. If you think it's about the camera, you should, I'd say it, quit what you're doing. Yeah, stop learning. Or to change your mind or quit what you're doing. Because it's, it's not about this or this or this. I mean, end of the day, in the studio, this was a nightmare to work with, but I got amazing results at you know, 100 ISO with the photo shoot, the photos are going to be no better from this one than they were with this one. It's just, this was a nightmare to shoot with. Mm -hmm. It made it extra difficult for me as an operator where this one was just helping you out. You're like, bloop, focus, bloop, focus. And I'm sitting there for minutes trying to entertain the model, you know, make her laugh. 
do something while secretly in my head I'm like, this thing is not focusing, it's never gonna focus. Ugh. So that being said, it's it's all it's all about the operator. Okay, how about um let's both these two cameras, Samsung yes. and the Canon. Uh, have NFC Wi-Fi built-in Bluetooth or whatever. Oh, yes Samsung does not want to work with the iPhones or Apple products uh, Not true. Not true. Not true. Other way around um, Apple oh, I have a... Well, it's it's because ooh the mayor is following impure uh -oh. See that? so our mayor cool. here in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania is Following a movie that, that we will be, we're in pre-production for yeah. a feature film. That'll come out next year. That's sometime. pretty cool. Anyways, this is my iPhone <laughs> six that I got because it has NFC. Okay, I didn't do my research. I just ran out and bought it like an idiot at full price because I didn't have an update ready. Whatever, because this thing that I was so hyped up for has NFC. It's actually on this side now. In the prototype, it was on the other side. But right there, it has NFC. I don't know if you can see that somewhere. The little NFC. Anyways, you can basically. I have a tablet to. Uh, what is it? Nexus it's Nine. It's a Nexus Nine tablet. Yeah, and you can take. And I tested this with it, and you can take photos. And there's a little mobile button on the back. You can just tap. And once you do the initial setup, it takes like a minute. It will take your photos and put them in full resolution right to the tablet. So it's pretty cool because you can share stuff right away to like Facebook if you wanted to. That's kind of weird, but because we're used to shooting in RAW and we want to look good. But if you want to share it immediately, that, that's kind of cool because then it's like you could take it out as a little point and shoot too and share it really quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay, downfall. If you shoot in RAW, it doesn't work. Yep. Yeah, or shoot. it does, but it converts it to JPEG. Yeah. So it's not full resolution. I don't think it does, even works, I think. I forget, but I think I had to switch to JPEG, or it went... Yeah, I think I had to switch to JPEG. We were messing around when we were doing uh, yeah. location shoots for actually in here. Anyways, this has NFC. So I get home, and I Google how to enable NFC. And first thing I see... Apple has locked down NFC only to Apple Pay. Not open to developers, not open to any other apps, nothing. It works with Apple Pay only, which means you can't do photos with this. Now this does have Bluetooth, and I've tried it that way, and I still didn't get anywhere. Yeah. It will not detect the iPhone on this Samsung. And it's probably an Apple thing. So I can use it with my tablet, and that's great, but I cannot use it for RAW, which is why I wanted to use the tablet, is because I can offload it onto there, and I have the little, uh, you know, the little expansion memory, the SD flash cards, mm -hmm. whatever. Not SD, um, micro USB. So, but that's kind of a bummer because it automatically converts them to JPEG. So that's not so. a good. That's not a good yeah. offloading system for later, you know what I mean? Or if you're an Apple user and you want NFC, uh, good luck. It is Apple wanting to be protective. I mean, it's... I think they'll open it up eventually. It's just not I don't open see, right I don't now. See, personally, knowing how Apple is, I don't see them opening it up because it's a security flaw. Maybe in like two years. It's a security flaw. Maybe not. It's a security issue. Yeah. So, which, hey, that's good for you, Apple. Yes, but... There's a reason why I want to go back to my Sony uh, Z3s. I'll stay with my Apple because I am so used to the iPhone. It's been too many years. I tried an S4 and it was a nightmare for me. All right, so I guess we can talk about final conclusions on what camera we chose to be the best, not the best. Best um, overall, and we're going to keep this still uh, separate categories, stills and video. Yep. So, um, photo-wise, I like the Canon. Um, it's autofocuses faster. Uh, drive mode is more constant. Um, it's more consistent as well. Yeah. Um, I'm also choosing the Canon for photos. Okay. Uh, in the studio, obviously that helped a lot more than the Samsung due to the OLEDs. 
Um, uh, yeah, this was useless in a flash setting where you're doing things that are uh, basically high speed sync and or, you know, Trying to compensate for the flash, and not you're right. trying to con take control of light verse. Like, Unless you're shooting here. like comedy lighting or something, or beauty lighting where everything's already bright. Yeah. Then this is not going to work for you for autofocus yeah. and framing. It's going to disappear. Definitely. Um, really, that's kind of that. Um, Canon's been tried and true and just slowly getting perfected. Um, where Samsung's first pretty much high-end DSLR and they did a phenomenal think, job but yeah when it comes to photos like what they were saying oh this is gonna be a phenomenal photo photography camera it yeah wasn't. It, it, it the really... cons we can do a pros and cons I guess the cons yeah. of this are if you look at it on paper this wins but that's on paper because right? it's got like 205 phase what, phase detection points and 207 or nine uh, or whatever it is. Yeah, Cro whatever. Contrast. Con a billion focus points. But that's great. You have a billion focus points that don't work well at all. Like, Even so, when they're in single and you're just doing a spot. Right, and they're, and they're supposed to be bad. over, I think, over 151 um, that, are, that are dual type. Mm -hmm. And they take up 90% of the sensor. So why, why can't it focus on the sun? You know, yeah. it's like, it's, it's really, it's really crazy. So, uh, we learned a lot more by, you know, once we got this in our hands than looking at specs, the specs were pretty much out the window. It makes no sense why this has double the autofocus points of that, yet this is like, always nails the focus really quick. This is hunting mm -hmm. very badly. That makes no sense. So, um, well, I mean, it does make sense. It's because there's a bunch, I mean, you can either have 65 good autofocus points that are cross type, or you can have 151 or whatever total crap cross type. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's not total crap. They do, they do function. They do work. Um, they're not, they're not as that is bad as we've bashed them, but it, it's usable, but on a professional level, no. When I saw when I saw the picture from Red Bull Rampage of the mountain biker going off and everything somewhat looking good, it was like, cool. No, no, I'm not gonna go and shoot Red Bull Rampage or... No, because um, you'll get one in focus shot and the rest, here's the biker and here's your focus. Yeah. Turn around and behind. So, or it's I'm not going to go nasty. do a ski or snowboard shoot or something. I'm going to take the cannon. Even dogs and... walking slowly did the same <laughs> thing. Walking slowly in front of me. Yeah. I mean, it, one in focus and then here goes the dog and the focus is like, you know, dragging an ass. Yeah. Like, what is that? So... That was pretty much that. Video-wise, though, the Samsung, even if we just stick and just stay at 1080p, the Samsung was phenomenal. Um, yeah, it's got, it's got its own aesthetic because of that high bit rate and the H.265. Yeah. And also just because it has its own aesthetic. It's, I'm, it's, I'm ecstatic it's got for the H.265 after seeing what it looked like. I mean, 70 it, megabits. It, it's, to give you an idea, we'll, like, we'll show you what it looks like, but I kind of personally think it looks like if you shot something on the Red Epic, um, now I'm not counting uh, dynamic range here. This does not have nearly the dynamic range. It just does not even, even close. what this camera yeah. has. Well, we don't know that. I think we need to test that a little bit more with the settings and stuff. Um, mess around a little more. Cause it's got to have basic, you know, eight stops or whatever. Yeah. But uh, anyways, so what was I saying? Oh, this looks like, to me, like you shot something on the Red Epic, and you did a really nice color grade, and the result is what comes straight out of the camera from this. Mm -hmm. It's super sharp. Um, it, it's, it, looks, it looks really filmic. It's, except for in the way that it's, it's almost too sharp. Mm -hmm. So I need to try to find a way to expand the dynamic range a little bit um stop having it crush the black so much and um and soften up the image and and make it a little more uh malleable for grading so that it could be used as a b camera to an epic or 
or some other 4K, you know, yeah, whatever. Um, but really, that's those are kind of the few points that. Yeah, so it we had autofocus drive, um, just just um, burst General mode, use. burst mode two, and just like this was th this this Canon was very consistent. Uh, every time, you know, it, it takes about the same amount of time for your buffer to write to the card to write uh, till you're ready to shoot again. Um, this one would take way longer, and sometimes it'd be like two minutes. Sometimes it'd be thirty seconds. It was it was just a lot more sporadic. A lot in photo mode, um, it's just sporadic like that. Yeah. Um, now in video mode, uh, we both picked the Samsung. Mm -hmm. And that's a, even at 1080, but the shoots in 4K and it looks beautiful. Um, so that's not even close. Yeah. So I actually originally bought this just to use until I get this, and now I'm keeping this, and this is my dedicated photo camera. This is going to be my video camera, my B camera, hopefully, to the Epic if I can match it up. Um, if not, it's so good that I'll keep it, um, maybe for smaller shoots, maybe, Family maybe, stuff may, or something. well, not even that small, maybe if I have some, some low budget shoots where I don't need an epic and, you know, this is still gonna, it, it, it looks phenomenal. It's yeah. like seeing HD for the, or 3D for the first time. It's kind of, the shots have a lot of depth, they have it, it's just a, it's a really nice aesthetic. It's mm -hmm. like sharp without being ugly sharp. Um, it's just a lot of things at once, and that that high bit rate, the 1080 60 even, you don't look like you're seeing frame blending and and, and things in between frames like you do on this and AVC HD at 28 megabits per second, uh, especially when it's split down to 14. So this was just overall superior in video to anything I've ever seen out of something this size. The the next my next favorite camera and you'll think I'm crazy is the uh NEX five N below this for video for uh, this size. Yeah. Um and if you have an hour I'll tell you why. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> that's I, I won't for go, another I won't hour go after in, this ten-hour session. Yeah, I won't go into that right now. But um, I can. I, I've used the NEX 5N before, and like um, smoke. I mean, it's a lot about the operator. Um, but I can smoke like a FS 700 with it, just in in overall look. No, I can't shoot at 240 frames, but I can make a lot more like uh, high quality beautiful looking and filmic looking video with yeah. that $200 discontinued camera because it has a solid sensor. Yeah. So back to these, um, the red we had in here for just kind of, uh, can it do it all? Does it outdo everything? And you said, um, if I asked you for photos, would you still take this? I mean, price aside, cause we have to throw it aside cause this is, not in, these are in the same price range. This is not. Yeah. Um, would you still pick this for photos over this for stills? I would, um, but then there's a few main reasons is with the Epic you're going to need a lot more. You're going to need a whole lot more stuff. Right. Um, Whereas you could handhold this. Yeah, exactly. Granted, you, I mean you can handhold this. The Epic's handheldable. Um, it's heavy, but it's it's you gotta change batteries more often. You need a charging state. You kind of need an assistant. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you could you could go without it, especially if you put a brick on here, and then it's be even heavier. You need a lens out here, and then the follow focus so you can actually. Yeah. So focusing and stuff like that. That's where. Oh I'm yeah. Excluding. Auto focus is out on this. Yeah. Uh, the jury's out on that. You can use it for complex uh, focus pulls if you want to take the time to set all that up um, to do that automatically, like uh, rack to like nine different points in two seconds or something weird. But I am I'm never gonna use autofocus on this thing. Yeah. Uh, I'll always be pulling focus on that. So I mean, still I'm gonna 
still take the Canon for photography side of things. Um, and I think I would too in most situations. The only situation I wouldn't is if you're taking this and we're gonna go film some like snowboarding or something crazy fast and you're already taking that, I'm gonna go take this and get the, the crazy different things I can get shooting at 120 frames a second yeah. with an infinite buffer and you know what I mean? I can just pull stills out wherever I want. Um, then I'd take this. Mm -hmm. But then it's like, do I want to take this out in the snow? What if I drop it? You know, there's still all I've that. I shot in 115 degree weather with an Epic. I know. I shot dirt. on. I shot the day I got this. I shot on a roller coaster that just went in loops. Yeah. On a little monopod that was just between my legs, and I was stepping on it. I'm pretty confident taking this thing through anything, but I'm just saying a lot of people wouldn't be comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. So beyond that, though, that's pretty much it. Um, Thanks everyone for watching our movie. Please visit us at goldencityfilms.com. Um, look, f expect big things coming out. We do have a uh, here coming out next year. Um, yeah, we have a feature so. coming up. We'll be shooting the trailer in about two weeks. It's called Impure. You can check it out now. Why do you keep saying that we're we're not releasing the damn trailer? Huh? We're not releasing we're that trailer. It. Sorry. It's not, no one needs to know about the trailer because oh, no one's going to be here. That's right. Okay. Sorry. Where can we cut back to? Uh, I'll just say hey, thanks for shooting or thanks for watching. So, um, yeah, we'll just start with thanks for watching. Okay, so that's our general overview and our picks. So we to sum it up. Uh, Red Epic, awesome, obviously. Um, this wins for photos for us. Everybody has their own things. This wins by far for video. And they both win by far for what they win for. Mm -hmm. I have to say definitely. that. So um, definitely check out our website if you want. Uh, it's goldencityfilms.com. And Leave subscribe to our channel. Yeah. Uh, argue with us in comments about all the stupid specs that we said that may be wrong. <laughs> Um, cause they're on the internet for you, so we're just, I mean, we're, we're close. We're within a few numbers, okay? All of this was mainly just what we, we've had the cameras, the, these two we're, cameras we're trying, for a week. We're trying to give you the, uh, knowledge of the camera and how it performs that the specs can't. That's why we didn't sit here and go over detailed specs. If you want to look, there's a billion videos of guys reading off the specs. But uh, after using it, the specs don't matter to me about either of these. Either one. The, the, the specs, they don't lie. They just don't tell the whole tale. Yeah. I mean, like what I said, I was expecting when I saw the Red Bull shot, I was like, cool, maybe Randy's right with autofocus. Uh, it still seems too good to be true. Randy's all about the specs. Um, I, I hate it. I, I wanted the Canon to Cannon. lose. He wanted the Samsung to lose. I mean, it's it's my money. I'm owning all of them now, but I'm keeping this like almost against my will. Yeah. I, I it, like it's that good that it convinced me to keep a camera that I really didn't want to keep, and then I won't be shooting photos on this, not professionally, anyways. But I will be keeping it for video, which I kind of. I had a hope, after seeing how good this was with photos, I kind of had a hope that this would just be bad for video too, so I could just send it back and all together be like, oh, that's garbage. Yeah. But it's not. It's, it's got it's, it's got its own beautiful aesthetic. And did we, did we touch on the ISO? Not really. Okay. Um, well, we did a little bit. Well, real quick on, on video we'll on this, we went to, we were shooting at about 2,000, comparing, you know, the Epic to the 4K on on the Samsung, and we noticed from about 320 to about 2000, even beyond that, um, the noise level is that you see at 320, when you go up, it does not increase at all, no. whatsoever. It stays exactly the same. Um, it's got that semi-filmic look, just like a film convert or like a FS100. Um, so it's not like dirty, ugly color noise or anything. It's just noise, noise, the yeah. grain. Um, so that was a big thing about this, which is totally opposite of how it performs in photos. But I thought that was great. So I, I, I'm going to keep this, 
Um, like I said, I'm going to try to match it to this, and when I get that done, I'll, I'll post it up. Um, but if I can't get it to match, um, I'm going to keep this because it's a whole... It's a fun camera. It's a fun camera. It's a whole separate It's so like look. a GoPro for kids. That's our GoPro. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, I mean, just for what it can do, I, like, I can carry this around and just get 4K video wherever I go. Just always yeah. have it with me. And if it breaks, I lose $1,500. If that breaks, my Rest life ends. Gram. My life ends. So, so okay. yeah. Again, subscribe. Look at our uh, webpage, goldencityfilms.com. Um, expect big things coming very soon. Uh, do you want us to keep doing these kind of long uh, talk videos? Should we make talks? them shorter? Um, do you want us to shut up permanently? Do you uh, want us to go leave, more detail? Leave us your comments below. Um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be working on a feature coming up next. We start shooting in March, but we are in pre-production right now. Yeah. Um, and we're very excited about the script. It's called Impure. You can check that out on Facebook. Just look up Impure or go to the website impurethemovie.com Impure and impuremovie.com. Yeah, uh, um, and other ones. There's another website that I can't remember off the you top. You can go of to one head. of those too. Yeah. Um, so get ready for that. Um, again, thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, don't forget to leave us comments on this long video, uh, and give us some feedback. Please argue with us. Randy has irrational no things. Randy is up until about. 5 a.m. and life. wakes just, up at about 2 p.m. So I don't need um, to know my personal life. Well, now they do. So well, that's fine. Send me comments. I will argue with you to the death if I'm right. If I'm wrong, I'll just be like, "Oh yeah, I was totally wrong about that." But if I'm right, I will argue to the death. Hey, um, <laughs> what about this iPhone 6 Plus that you thought I had? And it's just the regular one. Whatever, it's still You're wrong. oversized. Were you wrong? I don't care, I'm wrong. <laughs> it still go. has the same screen right. as my NEX 5. Bye, bye. <laughs> We're done.